No. I'm online. Right? Is it working? I don't even know if it's working. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, it's working? Oh, is it? Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I was worrying a little bit. Okay, well, apparently, the... What's it called? The chat's not working now. Goodness, goodney, goodness gracious. Ay, ay, ay. Yay, yay. Well, you know what? I don't need that. I don't need that. Because I can just see it in the corner of the screen. That's all I need. Alrighty. The other thing that I have to apologize about right now is that uh, I had no idea or way to really get the audio from the game kind of put with the whole, you know, setup. So it's going to be inputted into the microphones. So you're going to hear <laughs> really crappy audio. I hope you're all ready for some really insanely crappy audio. So anyway, now that that is taken care of, and, and I can see people, people can hear me. Can everyone see the game? Is the game on the screen? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Anyone want to confirm that? Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alright. So, thing, uh, order of business number one is that accidentally Turned it down. Did it work? Did I fix it? Okay. It's <laughs> it's fixed. The <laughs> Yeah, that's that's my bad. My bad on that. Hi again. I was gonna make a tweet. Let's see. S streaming is happening. It's doing something, but it's happening. <laughs> But it's happening. Alright, do I have... Alright, well, tweet is up. Make that tweet, yeah. The tweet is happening. <gasps> I would enjoy it if we could go right to them goth. Wait, what is this? Junk rat voice. Who's who said anything about a junk rat voice? Who is doing this? Build that dad. All right, well, folks, we're gonna build a dad, and then we're gonna go through the game 
super fast. Why am I looking at my microphone? The camera's right here. Okay. What what do people want for do we want to make Junkrat a dad? Is it gonna be the adventures of Junkrat and Goth Dad? Is that what's happening? Ooh. Let's do that. Let's do that. Build that junk rat. Yeah. So let's make I don't know how junk ratty we're gonna make this. You know me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> junk rat. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna I don't I don't know. I don't know about this junk rat thing. I don't know about this junk rat thing. Oh no. Junk rat's gonna junk rat is a clean shaven boy. He's clean shaven. Alright, here we go. Junk dad. Alright. I mean this is the closest thing. It's a junk rat. Stream. I'm watching you. I'm watching you stream. Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb here. Just make me. Okay. Action. Ah. Oh no. Turn down video settings. Which one are these? Ah, wait a minute. I see what it is. Dream Daddy is the one. Dream Daddy is the one that is doing this. Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy, why are you trying to fight me? Why are you trying to fight me? I think I realize what the problem is. Ha! <laughs> now it's a tiny window! Here we go, kids. I'm gonna fix it. There we go. How's this? Is this working a bit better? A bit better. Being absolute garbage. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Geo and see what happens. Because Geo was the first dad I played in. So. Alright, well, you know what? Let's just stick with Geo. I don't know. these nice dad tips. It's dad tips. Great dad tips. Don't, don't eat three hours before you, you go to bed. True, it's on action game. The chat's always a little bit laggy in the scene, so we're just gonna deal with that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think the Dream Daddy either broke or actually loaded. Yep. 
Yep. Yep. All right. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna skip. We're gonna go super fast. You ready? We're going super fast. I'll introduce you to Geo momentarily. So many sounds are happening real fast. Nice. Nice. It's a good time. Alright. Oh, this is going so fast. We're, we're sonic fast here. Alright, well, you know what? I'm gonna date just junk. junk I must said junk rat. Oh, we're gonna date junk rat. That's what's happening tonight. Uh All right. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Okie dokie. Let's just zoom, zoom real fast. I forgot that we could zoom. I forget this. Okay, dad book. Dad book's happening. Oh, there's art in the chat? That's happening? Oh, man. Now I want to see. Now I got to see this art. I get distracted. Super easy. Same. Oh, I'm feeling this art. This art is me, man. Oh, I feel that. Okay. There's no junk rat happening in this stream. Oh, no. Steam. Steam. Back out. Back away. All right. Let's see how long I can sleep for. I am... Okay. So, before we get into anything, this is my dad. His name is Giovanni. His first name is Gio, and his last name is Vani. I played this for the first time when, oh god, I was coming back from a family vacation, so I was flying back from Florida to Philly, and I it was the day the game came out, and I was afraid it wasn't going to come out, so I couldn't play it the day of, but the game came out while I was waiting in the hotel down in the Disney World, and I downloaded it, and I took it with me, and played it on the plane and for the whole two hours 45 minutes or something that it took to get from florida to philly it was just dream daddy it was a good time it was a good time my sister fell asleep though okay all right let's zoom a little bit more i was not on a pokemon okay. I didn't. I didn't name my dad. Actually, Aww. my god sister named me. She was the one who did it. I don't like your attitude. Actually, I was. I was concerned. Aww. I want to date dads. Let me date dads. Let me do it. Aww. Okay. Aww. This is interesting. Aww. Okay, go Aww. super fast. Super fast. Aww. Sonic fast. Sonic fast. All right, here we go. Here we go, kids. We're doing it. We're doing it. I'm gonna be 100% honest with these, by the way. Uh, Friday night. Uh. uh let's see. Because I don't have meme. Meme is the obvious answer, but... One thing on a desert island, what would it be? A boat. Turn on, so this is getting personal. Just kidding. I've done this before. Let's see. I... Hmm. I think I said strong dad arms first time. What did you want to be? Oh, hell, good father. Always. Favorite genre.
And Sean Connery. I'm really feeling it with the Murder on the Orient Express. Sean Connery. Ideal day. Ooh, puzzles. Napping is good too. Eating is also good. Arson. But arson. You know, just because you guys were saying junk out earlier, I'm gonna go with arson. Arson is a good one. Uh, leave home without. I don't know. Cripplingly low self-esteem. If that's not me, let's go with that. All right. Spent a lot of time thinking about. I I do contemplate the end of the world often. There we go. Time to date the dad. Yeah! I'm so ready. Alright. Go get him. Go get him, tiger. Welcome. You've got that. Alrighty. I've already gone through all of Damien's fruit, but you know. You know. Let's do it again. Just one more time. Okie dokie. I, this is the first time I've actually sat down and read his bio here. Information Superhighway. God, Damon, you're such a nerd. Wow. Uh, okay. Long strolls through graveyards, obviously. Spending time with that boy that needs to be grounded forever. Uh, da 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 da. Send me a letter. Give me that letter. True crime. True crime. Coffins. Pronouncing bosom correctly. It is pronounced bosom. Glad we've gotten that taken care of, squared away. I want to be a bat. <laughs> Same. Me too. Just kidding. I wanted to... I think every kid went through that phase where they wanted to be like a pizza person that made pizzas and then a singer or an actor... I think when I was a kid, I wanted to make movies, and I'm still doing that, so that's a good time. Uh, favorite movie genre? Foreign horror, art house horror. Okay, that's very specific, because if it was just foreign horror, I was going to say, get that slit mouth woman movie away from me. I don't like that movie. Or the trailer. The trailer isn't good either. It's freaky. Ideal date, it's night. You're in. Where are we at? An industrial dark. Why does this sound like the the, the SNL sketch? Stefan. Music drums to the beat of our hearts. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, buddy. Uh, upside down cross and morality. Of course. Why didn't you go through a pizza phase? I just I'm just seeing these now, but oh, man, pizza phase. Man, the pizza maker phase. My sister and I both went through the pizza maker phase. We just really wanted to make pizzas. And then it was singer, actress. And then... At one point it was veterinarian, but then I realized you had to know math and science for that, and I just couldn't do that. It was a little too difficult. So. Oh well. Oh well. Am I the only person who went through a pizza phase? Wow. Wow. That's a little wonky then. Oh, oops. Oops. There we go. Fix that. Geo and Junk Dad. Mads! Mads is here! Hi, Mads. Mads is actually the reason why I'm the voice of Damien. Fun fact, folks. That is a fun fact. Madeline's a cool, cool bean. That cool kid. Okay. Uh, it seems really interesting. A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little better. 
and navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. And it's the, isn't it the dopey one? <laughs> hey, dude! Seem cool. We should hang out sometime. Uh, I sit there for a minute before I see Damien that, that he's typing. Yeah, but then he keeps typing. And typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sip my coffee, and the computer finally dings. Oh, God. I don't know if I should... Oh. Shoot. 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 I can't scroll up. No! I've made a big mistake this day! God, no. Oh, well. Oh, well. Ah. Hey, Amanda. What's up? Oh, no. My sweet bean. My sweet bean. I'm fine. Don't cry. I love you, it's hmm. okay. Oh, I'm sorry. We've all been there. We've all been there, Amanda. Um, I'm so sorry about your plan. A real one. Let's get some real plants. Where did you rescue it from? Let's do it. Do it. Still love that plant. Oh, keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, my little girl. So pure, so good, so pure and good. This is what being a parent is like. So yes, sweetie, make sure it gets into a good college. Um, let's change this up. Can help me with something. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Ah. Interpret. Interpret for me. Just... Net speak. How, how do net speak? <laughs> um... Doo -doo -doo. Hot new thing. LOL. LMAO. And now <laughs> we're talking about a whole new vernacular. Yeah. Great. Ha. How will we address the nobleman in regards to your upcoming, upcoming debutante ball? Is this Van Helsing? Guys, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It was a good movie. It was a good movie. Alright. A suitor, worthy of our land. Or our ah. Wait, Amanda, are you in charge of the dowry here? Are you the one who is here to collect? I have a feeling Geo is ah. worth at least... Three goats, maybe like fifty pieces of gold coins. You know the gold, the old gold coins, and then like three goats. That's all he's really worth. Sure thing, dude. All right. Here we go. Just making sure before we actually go on this date, is the stream still working? I just want to know. Because if it's not, then... If it's not working, she is worth so much. Geo is worth so many. Tell you what to draw. Um. Oh, yeah. Let me. I'll turn that down a wee bit. I'll turn that down a wee bit. There we go. See if that works a little better. Um. Let's see. Okay. I just saw that you wanted me to tell you to draw something. Uh. Da, 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 da. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Honestly. How about... Hmm. Damien is Batman. It's a good one. It's a good one. He is the Batman, the Bat-Dad. So, if you needed, whatever. There you go. Alright. 
Let's see. I make the shirt walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor, estate. The gothic architecture looms over the other homes in the cul-de-sac. Because he's probably got that cash money. And I'm going to try and move this microphone so the sound is still not as loud. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around and look around for a doorbell. I can't read English. Um, there doesn't seem to be one. I pull the large, ornately carved bat head do bat's head door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I'm sorry that Lucien is crying. <laughs> this dad is so embarrassing. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. Creak. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of who I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall, including the Borzoi. Just telling you now, th the Borzoi in the corner is definitely... Uh, definitely. <laughs> Lucian looks so dopey in this picture. Oh, man. That's a mess. Uh, as I'm admiring them, the front door slams shut behind me. Hello? Scared man? Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all the people in these paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it so cold in here? Where's Damien? He's in the picture! Can't you see? It's his house. First drawing is in. Oh, I'm late on this. I'm late on this. Checking these out. I shouldn't have closed that. Gosh darn. Same. Look at him. Bat dad. Mm. Mm. Bat dad. All right. All right. Are we doing? Are we doing reading the lines as Damien, or are we just going straight in? I have a feeling that it's going to be. It's probably going to be reading the lines. Should have prepared for this. But I haven't. But I haven't. Come here, Dr. Pepper. Help me. And I have some lemonade, too. So that, that helps a little bit. All right. Are there... Oh, my God. Are there more art thingers happening here? Yikes. I wasn't prepared. All right. Gio, a pleasure to have you in my home. I look up and see Damien standing at the top of Majestic Staircase with Walking Candle Holder. What's, uh... What's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry. There was a draft. The door creaking open when I knocked? I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil paintings? I like oil paintings. Right. Right. Nervous boy. Please, let, let me show you around. Okay, let's go. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Welcome to Cribs. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary seating room, and the parlor again for some reason. Some... <laughs> he just really likes that picture of the Borzoi, let me tell you. This is one of the older homes on the block. Yes, but... Nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. Through extensive renovations, I've been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and equipped with the amenities of any modern dwelling. We walk past a door covered in bumper stickers, caution tape, and a black parade poster. <laughs> oh, Lucian. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teenage years are. Onward, onward. There's more to see. Let's go. We reach a door at the end of the hall, and Damien opens it with a flourish. Yeah, this whoosh, open. Are we going to do it, guys? Are we going to look at the book? I think we're going to do it. I think we're doing it. And, oh, it's him. And this is the library. 
Sunlight streams in from floor to ceiling, arched windows, the walls are lined with packed bookshelves, and even more books are scattered over the period-appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Uh, da -da 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 -da. We're picking up the book. We're picking up the book! You know, Gio, in the Victorian era, there was some controversy surrounding reading. Many people thought the more tawdry novels would encourage youths into a life of crime and would cause too much of a distraction from work and school. I pull out a book at random and examine the worn cover. Opening it, I turn to a random page and read aloud. Naruto struggled against the chains that Sasuke had bound him with. Shirtless and out of breath, he looked up at Sasuke. Sasuke smirked, unbuttoning his ninja pants. What? Uh, okay, I, th I think that's enough. Damien snaps the book shut and puts it back on the shelf. That's a rare book from my private collection. We all know what this boy's into. We all know. Uh, let's, let's do all of it. Let's go. I walk to the window and am greeted by a beautiful view of Damien's backyard. It showcases a beautiful view of the rest of the cul-de-sac. Hey, I can see Craig on his lawn. He's doing push-ups with his daughters on his back. That man. Damn. Damn. He sees me and waves happily, doing push-ups with one hand now. Damn! <laughs> oh, no. Did you know that a Victorian spent at least 20 hours a week gazing longingly out of full-length windows? Wait, really? No, but Victorians did appreciate telling a good joke. Ah, oh, this boy. This boy. I walk up to the glass display of pin bugs on the wall. It's pretty impressive. Nice bugs. <laughs> nice bugs, kids. Oh man, I pinned them all myself. Maybe I could show you how sometime. Please. I'm concerned I would stick the pin right through my fingers. I actually did that today. Ah, the pinner's gambit. Is that a thing? No. Oh, please, will you join me for tea? Oh, good boy, good boy. I follow Damien to his sitting room, where finger foods have already been set out upon a beautiful, tiered silver tray. I take a seat on one of the high back chairs as Damien pours and serves me some tea. I can't believe we're having a high tea. I never thought I'd get to do this. Damien smiles to himself. That's, that's him smiling to himself, I guess. What? It's a common misconception that high tea refers to the wealth or class of the people enjoying it, when in fact the high refers to both the later time of day that the working class had to enjoy and enjoy tea and the height of the tables on which they were served. This smart man. He's so smart. Oh. My dear friend, we're currently enjoying afternoon tea. Just to let you know. people who don't know the difference between your teas. That's informative. It is. Damon takes a seat next to me and serves me a tiny sandwich. Oh man. Where do we want to go? I personally... I'm personally in the mood to hit the cape button because I know what the cape button does. But, I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, anybody, let's see, anyone, anyone know what they want? I know I want the cape, but I don't want to make the decision for everyone. Because this is a communal date <laughs> with Damien. Communal date. Remember that. Alrighty. Cape? We got one cape. Two... two capes? Two capes. Three capes. Four capes. Alright, it's decided. We're going with the cape. Show me the cape. It's a cloak, actually, but thank you. Victorian fashion is very important to me. I'm surprised. I would have expected him to just snap at me and be like, It's not a cape. It's a cloak. Ignorant. I'm just kidding. You, you pull it off very well. He does. 
He does. Oh, thank you. Regardless of my historical learnings, it's very important to me to present myself well. It has taken a long time to come up with a style that's both true to form and representative of myself. But I'm very happy with how I dress. I do get some strange looks, yes, but it's something that brings me a great deal of joy, so I don't mind. To be able to wake up in the morning, pick from my closet a variety of cloaks, waistcoats, top hats, and even binders that are period appropriate feels amazing. Oh, what a good guy. I love him. You wear top hats? Hey, guys. Why is nobody talking about the top hats? Here it is. Top hats. Come on. Just kidding. You don't? Uh, I would love to wear a top hat. Um, Geo's just culturally insensitive, okay? And time period insensitive. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's talking about. At all. Ever. That's just the nature of Geo space Vani. That's him. What got you so interested in goth stuff? Oh. Well, when I was a young boy, my father... Did he take you to the city? Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Did you guys see a marching band? Oh. I'm afraid I don't understand. You're serious? Oh. Of course. But it's, you know, the song? Amanda made me listen to it. Seriously? I'd love to see a marching band. Oh, fun fact, while I'm marching banding. Here, marching band. Um, when I was in high school, I was actually drum major of a marching band, so I got to stand on a podium and conduct the entire marching band, which was pretty cool, apart from the fact that we only had, like, 12 people in the whole of the marching band. But you know, that's okay. I was in marching band for four years, two of which were drum major. So I find this really funny. Damien, I'll take you to see a marching band. You can come see my marching band. Or the one that I used to be in. That one. It's still a thing, I think. Yes, it's still a thing. <laughs> Nevertheless, I've always had a love for art, history, and fashion. What started off as a small hobby of collecting taxidermied animals grew into sort of an obsession. It's a privilege to be able to appreciate the lives and culture of those who came before us, I think. Why not go all the way? I like not dying when I catch a cold. Haha, <laughs> jokes. He takes a sip of tea. I could acknowledge that there were many very terrible things about the Victorian era, and to try to live a life that strictly aligns with those ideals would be admittedly horrid. But I think it takes a critical mind to truly appreciate something to the fullest, to be cognizant of its flaws and love it all the same. Tell me, Geo Fani, do you have any hobbies? Oh, hey, I just noticed this. I was also in robotics. That was another thing. Marching band and robotics at the same time. It's good, good high school career. It was hard, but it was, you know, busy. Oh man, I do, but I don't know if I care about anything the way you care about this stuff. Well, I'd love to hear about your interests. Hearing someone talk about the things they're passionate about is intriguing and quite honest, yeah, quite honestly, rather attractive. Sam, please do tell me about your hobbies. Quick, sound sophisticated. Uh, uh, I don't know how to juggle. Guess we're going with the word jumbly umbles. The uh, written word fascinates me. We spend so much time using words, you know. And, uh, I think people would appreciate them more if they had to unjumble them. It's poetic, really. Oh, so you're a writer. How'd you know? In a sense. I can write, read, and write both of those things at the same time. We finish our tea and finger sandwiches. 
Come, I have one more thing to show you. Oh, here we go. Time for the big one. Damien takes me around the back of his home where a variety of flowers flourish in beautifully landscaped rows. A small stone path weaves through it and butterflies flit lazily through the air. My garden. That's it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Victorians took flowers and floral, floral arrangements very seriously. And see, this is why... This is why only the oohs and ahs of Damien's speech is voiced, because I sometimes can't read correctly. Yes, that's it. <laughs> you see, it was considered uncouth to discuss personal and romantic relationships in public, so lovers and friends alike would use bouquets to send secret messages to each other. Each flower and plant is symbolic of different feelings. Teach me your ways. It's dark now. Get brighter. Great. Even more interesting is that one flower could mean different things depending on the other plants it was paired with. One had to be extremely careful, as even the style in which the ribbon was tied around the bouquet affected the message. Damien leans down and plucks a gorgeous bright orange flower off of, the, of a vine... That word. Uh, isn't that's Lilium bulbiferum, right? I can read. What am I talking about? Nice, the orange lily. <laughs> what do you think this one means? My loins are ablaze. I guess I said thou art the tightest. I think the last time I did it, and he was like. No, you're wrong. Hmm. I'm half tempted to say my loins are ablaze. Jeez, there, what is that? There's a weird bug out my window. Um, oh, thank you to this, to this person. I wish we could have heard more of your voice, though. Aw, oh, thank you. Thank you. I would have loved to record more, though. It was fun. It was fun. It was a really good uh, Friday. Friday? Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday. It was a three. We're doing three. Oh, that was quick. Three cheers for sweet. The t the tightest. Tightest boy. Um. Three cheers. Yes. Good. Good. The orange lily is actually symbolic of pure hatred. See, I knew I was going to get it wrong, no matter what. Well, and that's precisely why floral, flor, 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 floral arrangement is so challenging. What's your favorite type of flower? Hmm, well, I said honeysuckle, because in elementary school, there was a honeysuckle bush outside the back of the building, and we wouldn't go to class, we would just stand back there, and... Pick honeysuckle. I'm gonna say snapdragons. Because they're cute. And you do that thing where you squeeze them so it looks like they're talking. Geo, quite the charmer. Oh. <laughs> what a lovely choice. I'll have to remember that when I put together a bouquet for you. He would put together a bouquet for me. Nobody's given me a bouquet before. Now, now someone will. Geo. I follow Damien down the footpath and admire more of his beautiful flowers. Veggie's here! Hi, Veggie. Hi. How you doing? Oh, Geo, will you excuse me? I must take this. Up a little more. A little more. Pulls out a cell phone. Go for it. Go take that call. Damien smiles and walks back to the house. I take a deep breath and enjoy the heavily perfumed air. What a lovely yard. I would be sneezing up a storm. I'd just be sneezing uncontrollably. And this makes me wish I had put a little more effort into that garden Amanda and I tried to start one time. Our watermelons grew to the size of cherry tomatoes and then immediately died. 
machine. Oh, hey, a gargoyle. Oh, no, I knocked over the gargoyle. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Quick time event. Quick time event. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Go, 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 go. Mm. Dang it, I forget which piece it is. This one. No, stop it. Stop. No. Gosh, no. I am... Um, that's the head. Is I gotta flip this upside down? Gosh, no. I, I'm screwing it up, David. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Goal. Yes. Y yes. Yeah, okay. Nice. I... I had a minute of just pure panic, and then I remembered that I can do, I can do this. I did this the first time. I think I had a miniature panic attack on the plane as well, and that was interesting. I'm pretty sure the people around me were really worried for my safety and my health, but that's okay. I was in the middle seat, so people could restrain me if need be, but that's fine. Whew, that was a close one. Uh oh, here comes Damien. He looks upset. <laughs> I forgot that my voice is so loud. Geo, my sincerest apologies to have kept you waiting. There's an urgent matter that I must attend to, so I'm afraid I must take my leave. No problem, dude. Everything alright? Everything tight? Damien worries the hem of his coat with his fingers and looks away. He's real scared. Everything is perfectly fine, but I... It's Lucian. That boy! At it again. What's wrong? He appears to have... Well... His teacher needs me to come to the school post-haste. I think people need to use post-haste more in their, like, you know, in their regular sentences in speech. Also, um, yesteryear. That's another one. Oh no, you don't have to. Let me come with you. Us dads gotta stick together. Bros, till the end. Do it. You're, you're right. This is one of Lucian's more elaborate stunts. I would greatly treasure having another parent by my side. It's me. Let's go. Let's boo-boo. Hmm. If anybody's seen World's End, then you would know. You would know. Oh, Hugo. I also like Hugo's route. That's also a good one. Man, I love that genuine wrestle boy. Damien and I walk into the school and are immediately greeted by an anxious looking Hugo. I I'm not I don't know how to read Hugo, but hey Damien, you're here in record time. I wouldn't miss it for the world, dear friend. Wow, whatever it is, it doesn't seem like this is Hugo and Damien's first time to the My Kids Are in Trouble rodeo. Huh. Alright. What is it this time? Oh. This, Damien, you have to see to believe. Let's go see it! Damien and I fall into step behind Hugo, who leads us through the busy corridors of the school. We pass by several classes in session, and I vaguely wonder if Amanda's around. Hugo eventually ushers us into a small boiler room with a flight of rickety stairs leading down into darkness. Watch your step. I can hear faint voices drifting up from the basement, and they don't sound happy. As I'm led into the depths of the school, I recall the antics I got as an angsty middle schooler. At least I had enough sense to stay out of creepy basements. There's that boy! Lucien. Don't do this. We find another teacher in a boiler room tucked away in the back of the basement. With him are Lucien and Ernest, Hugo's son. Lucien has a bloody nose. Thanks for coming. I can't make heads or tails of this. I look around the scene of the crime and see a bunch of bricks and some masonry tools scattered around. How did you get those? That's... I'm kind of curious about that. Excuse me, how did that happen? What happened here? I don't know. What should Lucian sound like? Should he sound like one of those, like... Like one of those generic, stereotypical punk... Like, punk kids? Like, Ernest punch me! What a loser! That kid sucks! Just kidding. I love all the kids... I love all of them. I love them. Lucian... Luce? Would he sound like Lucian trying to kill me? Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Oh my is right. 
Um, I don't know what he sounds like. I don't know. I was not trying to kill you, dumbass. I was just trying to build a brick wall around you and see what would happen. Yeah, I guess. Who knows? You promised me there was blind down here. You tricked me, you piece of garbage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't call people pieces of garbage, Ernest. Where did your eyeballs go? I am... Oh, wait, there they are. Never mind, I can never find his pupils. Found them. <laughs> Found them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Lucian, did you try to cask of Amontillado Ernest? I read that once in my life. I don't remember it well. I just know there were skulls and stuff. I'm neither confirming nor denying that. I turned to Damien and whispered him. What's a... What's a cask of Amontillado? It's a classic Edgar Allan Poe short story where a man gets his enemy drunk, lures him down to his cellar and the pro with the promise of wine, of a fine vintage, and buries him alive behind a brick wall. Ah, it's a lovely story. So wait, Lucian, you tried to do that to him? I was curious to see how it would turn out. I wasn't actually going to leave him there. What was the thought process here? That Ernest was just going to sit still while you solely built a tomb around him? Well, it worked for like 20 minutes because he's an idiot, but then I realized that I had lied about the wine. He had realized that I lied about the wine. And you were cackling maniacally. This sort of tipped me off. I don't know. That's just what's going to happen. Ernest. 20 minutes? Dead. What? Dead. It took you 20 minutes? Son, we just did an entire two-week unit on the cask of Amontillado, and it took you 20 minutes to realize Lucian was leading you into an elaborate ruse? Did you even read the story? The story's like... I don't even think it's that long. I read the first five pages and then read the review of the movie. They made a movie? What? It's only five pages long and there is a... Yeah! I was just gonna say... Gosh darn. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I paid Lucian to read it for me. Me, 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 me. Actually, he didn't even pay me, so... Oh, that's Lucian. I forgot. Um, I forgot what I did. Actually, he didn't even pay me. So, when you think about it, this was me teaching him a lesson. Damon and Hugo both have their heads in their hands. Wow. You guys... Oh, that's Lucian again. You guys are always telling me to engage in the literature, and I did. I don't see a problem here. Alright, I'm fi filing this under what the hell. Don't do whatever that was again. You two are both suspended for a week. Get out. Ernest and Lucy and I five. <laughs> the teacher starts to stomp up the stairs. Hugo, I'll cover your class. Take your son home, Mr. Bloodmarch. Oh, Mr. Bloodmarch, you too. There is a period in between those two sentences. Thank you for your meditation. Me mediation. I can't read. Wow. Can't read. We all head up the stairs and out of the school in tense silence. Lucy and Damien and I all, all pile into my car and begin to drive home. Lucy immediately puts his hood up and stares out the window angrily. I'm not going to therapy again. Hmm. I know, son, it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to go. But I care about you, and I can see that you're struggling, so if you do decide that you would like to speak to a professional about your feelings, we can do that, too. Hmm. Maybe you can spend this next week looking for a summer job, hmm? I, I know how much you want your own car. I can't believe Damien's keeping his cool. I'm impressed. Fine. Thanks for not freaking out too hard. <laughs> I love you, son. I love these guys. Best fam. Best fam. I love them. They're so good. I love them. Lucian continues staring out of the window. Love you, too. Aw, cute kid. He still needs to be grounded, though, for, like, ever. Spending the rest of the drive in relative silence. The moment we pull into the driveway, Lucian hops out of the car, slams the door, and runs inside. I didn't expect to have that conversation in front of you. He and I have a, have a lot we need to work out. 
It's all right, and all things considered, Lucian's bricklaying was pretty good. So, there's your silver lining. Oh. There is that, yes. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna admire him, just because I love him so much. You were a lot more diplomatic with him than I would have been. I just want what's best for him, and I don't think yelling at him would do either of us any favors. It really does. You're a good dad. Mm. Oh, good dad. All right. See you around soon? It would be my honor and my pleasure. Damien bows with a flourish. Classy. Oh. Hi, Amanda. How's it going? I was gone for far too long. Yo, what you watching? Tiny House Hunting Brothers Extreme Edition. I can relate. I can relate. Ugh, I hate the show. I can also relate. The couple on screen bickers back and forth while standing in an extremely small house made out of recycled bottles. The tiny house hunting brothers watch them with bemused expressions, both of their heads touching the low ceiling. Oh, am I doing this too? I told you. I wanted a two bed, two bath, shabby, cheap cottage. This house doesn't even have a bathroom. But honey, the outside is only 20 yards away. It's not that bad. I am not pooping outside, Greg. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man, good time. Why don't they just get a regular sized house? I... I don't know. How would afternoon tea go? It got strange. We had to go to the school and pick up Lucy, and since he tried to, he lured Ernest down to the cellar with the promise of a fine vintage and then tricked it, tr uh, then tried to brick, brick him into the wall. I can't read. How did you know that? Has everyone read this story except me? I'm just kidding, I... Did. Lucy and livestream the entire thing. This entire day is beyond me. But otherwise, it was a fun day. That Damien guy's a character, but he's really good company. And a surprisingly diplomatic dad. I dig his style. You know what? Me too. Yeah! What score we get, guys? What score? What score? What score? And what line, if it's an S rank? Let's see. Let's see. That's loud. Are you familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? Corey Feldman. Simply slain okay. in the Lost Boys. I forgot, I forgot that there was more to that line. Uh, I hate to admit it, but I don't know who Corey Feldman is. I had to ask for clarification. I am not cultured. <laughs> what can I say? No culture here. The only culture is sea shanties at 3 a.m. and when I'm taking a shower. Just sea shanties all day long. Okie dokie. Do -do -do. Things are happening. Nice. Um, let's see. Mail truck, mail truck, mail truck. My coupons! We used to buy these books that had like... God, what is it? They have like a bunch of different coupons for a bunch of different places. And you buy them for around like 20 bucks and they have like so many. It's just about everywhere in the neighborhood. It was a mess. It was a mess. She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. Amanda, come down here! Come here! Look at this! I sing a, sh a sea shanty? I don't remember any. If I was listening to them at the same time as playing, and I pro or singing them, then I probably could, but I don't really remember them. I have them all on my Spotify. <laughs> I saved an entire playlist just of sea shanties. Um, faces on repeat. I can't believe this. Oh, honey. You got in, because you're the best. That's why. Um, I still can't remember any sea shanties. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my god. I really can't believe I got in. You nailed it. Your photography is so good. So good, girl. Wait, Dad. I know this one's really expensive and so far away. If that's not me, though... 
um, da -da 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 -da, one of the most expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she had her heart set on this for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're gonna make it work. Really? Of course. Amanda hugs me again. Thanks. Thanks, Bean. Thanks, my baby Bean. Yeah! Thanks, Dad. Okay, sweetie, we're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Whatever you want. Whatever? What's my Spotify? Uh, it's a mess. That's what my Spotify is. Um, cost is not a determining factor. Please, Dad. Two tacos. <laughs> the dad says vines. Twitter. Oh, man. Yeah! I got two tacos. <laughs> two. Man, I'd kill for a taco. I have this hamburger, cheeseburger thing here. I'm probably gonna have to warm it up at some point later, but that's okay. I'll also have some fries here. Throw them in the toaster oven. Make them nice and crispy. It's nice to see a man is so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it between bites of her burrito. I thought I'd taught her to chew with her mouth closed. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be. You take a survey online and match you with someone with a similar major and interest. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. Craig and I were. Oh yeah. A good roommate can be a lifelong friend. And butt buddy. My bad. <laughs> Whoopsie. But don't even get me started on bad roommates. Oh no. I'm just kidding. We didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a, who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark. Carl Rolfel. Yes! Oh, they let you have animals in the dorms? You get a note saying you, that, uh, saying you need one. I bet I could forge one. I think I'd get a rabbit. Or maybe a snake. Or maybe both. Would this snake eat a rabbit, though? Oh boy, I think I'll leave that all up to you. She's so excited, I don't want to disappoint her, but I need to be real for a second. So, you know, I had that talk with Mr. Vega. Oh, yeah. Aww. The one that I skipped. Because I went right to the barbecue. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I don't want to put a damper on the good news, but I need to know... I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, okay? If you really want to go to Horns, we need scholarships. Yeah, scholarships. I promise I'll try harder. Pat her on the back. Pat, pat. Oh, she teary. Think you can handle the 14 hour drive? Just fly. Just fly. Be worth it if I get to see you. You're gonna make me cry, man. Uh. Don't cry. Sorry, I'm just very proud of you. You're a, you're a big girl now. You're growing up. Too late, honey. <laughs> it's happening. My strong dad arms. Nah. You too. Huh. Same to you. Love you too, pops. Oh yeah. Welcome. Oh yeah. Alright. Dad book date part two. Let's actually while I'm hanging out here, might as well not click that. Okay. Let's add another tweet just to see if anybody else is around. Stream. Uh, we're up to date two. Who's ready? Let me tag Dad. Cause why not? Okay. And let's tag Dream Daddy. Cause why not? Why not? Alrighty. There we go. We are moving on to date number dos. Cool, here we go. Numero dos. Alrighty. How's everybody doing while we're hanging out here, waiting for date two to load? Good, I hope. Everyone's been very talkative. I'm sorry if I haven't been like actively looking over at the chat. I know people have been posting fan art, and I'm probably going to go back through and look at the things that you guys have sent, because I obviously want to see them. I save just about everything that I can find, and I have a folder on my computer 
specifically for uh, Dream Daddy fan art, just because all of it is just so good and pure and wholesome. I'm so thirsty, I'm almost done my Dr. Pepper. Alright. I had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. Good, yay, people are good in the chat. I hate how the chat is somewhat slower than I'm the, the speed at which I am talking, so... I'm sorry that answers are... Ooh, a donut! I have, like, really cold fries. From your grandma. No, it's from Damien. Whoa! Let me see that. Give me that. Old parchment. Folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, the dude goes all out. I prop the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads... Ahem. <clears throat> Prepare. Dearest Geo. I hope you'll find my continued correspondence endearing, rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower, more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I wrote this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has been greatly has greatly occupied my thoughts. While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unforeseen, your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Gio, if you allow me, it would mean the world to me if I could enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema followed by a moonlit shrub would be to your taste. I eagerly await your response with great respect, Damien Bloodmarsh. All right. Nice. Here we go. Man and I both look up from the letter. Wow. Oh, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> Is he going to catch a movie with him? <sighs> yeah, I am. Better message him on the old dad book. Slaps my laptop hey. shut. You have to write him back. A real letter. What? My handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. <laughs> Geo, you're a mess. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool. I made, uh, what is it called? Like when you tea stain paper. I did that once. And I mailed it in a, um, in one of those manila folders. And I mailed it to a friend of mine. I was a while back. I was way back. Uh, Father, I was made for this. Here's what you do. Find tickets to a show that you two will like, then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. A man and I hop onto my laptop and peruse showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of guy. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2. Yeah. Evil never dies. I don't know. That sounds kind of stupid. Yeah. I have to agree. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed uh, exploration... Into the oh god English words that I don't. I hate this I hate this you know what you know what whoa I miss titties <laughs> I miss getting to read Amanda say titties huh. well let's roll the dice see about them vampire titties I start writing Damien good morrow to you on this fine evening. <laughs> No, I, I think I said I went all out really classy with this. So I said, I do hope this letter finds you in good health. Good one. What's next? Hey, remember when your son tried to cask of Amontillado, that kid? You been good? <laughs> Must confess with my amateur control of the written word. Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Okay, we're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. Uh, you find me in good spirits, for I felt very much the same after our last encounter. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. What? Fall of Icarus? I find myself. Let me, um, get at that. 
I love these these so much. So good. I found myself enamored of the situation at hand. Bring it home, Pops. I'm gonna take you out. Two tickets to this movie. It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be a good time. Just kidding. I'm not gonna do that, because that would be weird. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Yeah. Smooth, calling it the cinema is a classy move. Classy move. In close, you will find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Hard daps. Namaste. Best wishes. Then I sign my full name. My name. My full name. Fancier that way. Giovanni. I also see that there's talk of cosplay in the side of the tab over there on my screen. Um, fun fact, I also do too take part partake in the cosplay. It's really funny. Because people have seen it, and it's whack. I do have to say, though, the best one that I have done so far that I enjoy the most was, um... It was Venom Snake from uh, Metal Gear Solid 5. Phantom Pain. Yep. Was it 5? Yes. 5. I haven't played it, but I watched all the cutscenes, and then I bought a beard and wore it for like, two days. It was interesting. Damien, I do hope that this letter finds you in good health. <laughs> uh, how... How romantic. Vampire Crusade. I spelled his name wrong. What? Nah, just trying to keep you on your toes. All I have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Okay. Um, let me see. Actually, while well, I'm just going through this next date... Um, I can probably see about after the third date, if there's still, like, a little bit of time and people want to hang out, um, we can, like, we can share stuff, we can talk about stuff, answer questions, do a bunch of different things. There is a fly in here. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but we can, if we have, um, if we have some time, I don't, there's, who is talking? Someone's, Okay. Uh, so, if we have some time at the end, if anybody wants to hang out and, um, just talk, do some cool things, show cosplay, fan art, whatever you want to do, I am 100% down. I never sleep. So, <laughs> I'll be here, I'll be around. Little kit with a bonus head. Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver to his doorstep. I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. I already called my guy. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I, I don't want to know if any of this is true. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and go back home. Aww. Mission accomplished? Yeah, now we play the waiting game. Boom, boom, boom. The night finally rolls around, where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter, thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps him pick out a nice outfit, and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? Crack! Thunder! Thunder! Lightning! I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. You almost gave me a heart attack. How long were you there for? Ah! God. I scared myself. Oh my god. Ah. I scared myself. How? 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 I... T oh god. Ah, oh man. Oh, God. I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. The light is going off again. 
Okay. Is that a thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? Huh. I, I didn't hear anything. What? Oh my. You too. What? Regardless, the hour grows close. Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing our tickets. Oh god, I can't believe I got scared by myself. Please allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids or perhaps Milk Duds. How about some of those, um, the Crunch, Bunch of Crunch. Those are good. I love those. Let's do it. Get in line to buy snacks. As we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ugh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucy and standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. What movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kid movie about talking animals. I, I don't really care about it. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. Ah! God, Ken! Jeez, Louise! I hate this. <laughs> I hate it. You watching that? God, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Wow. Yeah, I thought Damien would jump. <laughs> oh my god. Ha. <laughs> Good luck with that, Dad. Lucian rejoins his friends, and I look over to Damien. Good luck with what? It's nothing my son loves to tease. We wait in line for no. Lucy is not seeing the emoji movie. <laughs> Who said that? Hmm. Hmm. I need to turn the volume down. I'm not doing that again. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. Oh my god. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for previews. Glancing at him, I can see that he's sweating profusely and gripping at his armrest. Vampires, huh? Is everything okay? Everything is perfectly fine. I'm so uh, excited for this film. I'm a devoted patron of the arts. Especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Do you have a favorite horror movie? I, of course I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. Utterly terrifying. Hello. I just noticed someone said hello. Hello. Oh, interesting. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I would have expected him to bring up some sort of strange foreign horror film that I'd never heard of. Slipmouthed woman. Nobody do it. Nobody do it. Damien's knuckles are turning white. It. Oh god, there was a bug on my face. <laughs> Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest clean off. Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? Oh, my. You must be joking. I love horror movies. <laughs> Scarts. Scary arts. Scarts, if you will. The lights dim for the film. <laughs> God, again. Even the, even those turned down. This is just turning into me. Turning into Damien. I... Oh, no. I'm... Bec I'm... I am... Man, I'm final form right here, folks. I apologize. I was not thinking about something far scarier than... The oh, God, that's still Damien. <laughs> uh, I apologize. I was not thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. It. Oh, he's scared. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice, and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> the title flashes across the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil Never Dies. A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs. <laughs> it's something a coffin. That's gross. Awaken, my coven. I don't even know how he would sound. Awaken, my coven. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Because he's a vampire. Come on. Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother, is it time? 
yes, husband, but also mortal enemy. Is it? It is time. Yeah, I can't read. The three look at each other and then to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade. This rules. The trio of vampires flies off into the night as foreboding organ music plays in the distance. I somehow got lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually a pretty fun flick. <laughs> Damien, I swear, <laughs> we get to a tense moment of the movie where Romulus Trueblood sits at a truce, meeting with the general of the human army, whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Uh, Romulus, it is good to finally meet you. General, I good. It is, it's good to finally blood you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this is, ah, uh, this movie. Romulus leaps out and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the camera. Ah. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. Hold on real tight, boy. Hold on. I immediately blush, forgetting about vampires or blood or vampiric blood. Ah. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Damien retracts his hand and places it back on his lap. Huh. I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got to an extremely scary section. Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. I wish he would hold my hand again. Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. Got it. I'll do what all dads do best. Talk during the movie. My dad doesn't talk during a movie. He silences the people that talk at the movies. Um, point out a plot hole. Because that's what I would do. Did you notice how that guard fired seven bullets, but his gun only holds six bullets? Yes, that's absolutely unforgivable. From a filmmaking standpoint. It's almost unwatchable. It's funny how it's so much easier to point out tiny mistakes in the work of others than it is to actually go create your own thing, huh? Boy, if that's not my life in a nutshell. Hey, look. That's, that's, a, oh no. My inability to read English. It's at it again. The rest of the movie goes by relatively smoothly with only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. We get to the final scene of the movie, where Romulus Badblood and the General's wife embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true Vampire Crusade was the Vampire Crusade in our hearts, our cold, unbeating hearts. Blah, 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 blah. I guess. I don't know. Romulus and the General's wife begin making out. Hard. What? Me too, Damien. I'm not for... Oh, oh boy. Film fades to black, and the end appears on the screen. On the screen, but then it cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, uh, Carmela. You watch the two from afar. Oh no! Twist ending. Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next Vampire Crusade Three. Evil must die again. Blay, blay, blay. <laughs> More thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. Hey, at least it wasn't the room. That's all I have to say. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amidst throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember, but otherwise he survived the encounter. He even seems kind of invigorated. Oh. What an interesting film. While the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian, I was intrigued by its harrowing love story and great attention to detail in regards to vampiric lore. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk and the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being in a crowd. Lovely night, isn't it? As lovely as the comp- Oh, God, he's so fucking- As lovely as the company, yes. He thinks I'm lovely. Damn, okay, here comes the smooth response. Thanks. No. Problem. 
Nailed it. Nailed, crushed it. Eh, you're close. You and me, Geo. We're on we're on the same wavelength here. You and me. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I'm I sure am one smooth operator. Are you getting a little hungry? Maybe we could stomp off and grab something to eat. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery. What? Are we going in there? A little, uh, a little bit of a Victorian flavor, Geo. Trust me. Trust me. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. As we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful view of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being in a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate uh, finish to an evening after a vampire movie, wouldn't you say? With a flourish, whoosh, Damien produces a blanket and a picnic basket. Wait, where were you hiding that? Man, just kidding. It's it's the cloak. Oh. Under my cloak. Ta da! <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, right. Damien unfolds the blankets and we both sit down, gazing out at the city lights. He produces a bottle of red wine and a fine selection of cheeses. Oh. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and fine sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question, though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? Ah! I, I, I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared by that movie. I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. I just... I've never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films, so I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Bug again. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's alright, actually. Oh, it's alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one. Thanks to you, pointing out all those plot holes. Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. Oh. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, brings me great comfort. Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting alone in a graveyard at night, but I actually feel very peaceful. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off in the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. What is that? <sighs> I'm not sure. It noticed us. He noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fear as it begins lumbering slowly towards us, its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. Out of the bushes, he emerges. Shia LaBeouf. Just kidding. Just, just kidding. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer, moving faster. I'm hobbling along on my stump leg. <sighs> Oof. Oh. It's a dog. As it finally comes into the light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner, owner towards us. The dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hands. Damien looks ecstatic, and he ruffles the dog's fur happily. What a beautiful dog. I don't, I don't know how to read Robert, but... Hey. <laughs> That's terrible. We both look up, not expecting to see... Robert! Dun dun dun! Robert, what are you doing out here on this lovely evening? Hunting cryptids. <laughs> wow. 
What? What? I didn't know you had a dog. Light! Stop going out! I should keep that on my, on my lap. This is... This isn't my dog. Wait, then whose dog is this? Oh, I forgot. I found her watering in the streets. I put a leash on her, and now we're walking around in this graveyard together. Hunting cryptids. Yeah! Damien and I share a look. May I give her a treat? Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, but not to worry. Damien reaches into the depths of his cloak and procures a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? It is... Uh, Mary, it's his Mary Poppins cloak. Just keep pulling stuff out. The dog laps up the treat and crunches away, tail wagging furiously. Damien continues to smooth down her fur. Thanks. My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Oh. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his... dog disappear to the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I didn't know you liked dogs. Ah. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. I, um, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man. Dogs are pretty cool, I guess. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damon hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it, as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Oh. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Thank you ever so kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Geo, if you'll allow me, it would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. Bring it home! Yeah, the handkerchief. Chief handkerchief? Handkerchief. I don't... Sometimes I say both. Wow, thank you, Damien. I will use this to dry my tears for those I have lost. A noble purpose. Damien shuffles his feet. I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. It's nice to feel so accepted. Um, thank you. Damon gives my hand a quick squeeze. Squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Ah, uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone. Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Hey, Dad, what's up? Were you watching me from the window? No. I was just, uh, okay, yes. How was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. Told you. But as it turns out, Damien is scared. Wait. Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep it between me and Damien. Scary cool. Yep. He's so cool, it's scary. Nice save, Geo. Did you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? I think I'm misremembering that. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure you're not a werewolf? Amanda's eyes narrow. I don't trust you. Nor I you. We make intense, wary eye contact for a second. Anyway, I'm calling you for the night. Don't stay up too late, will ya? I'll try not to howl the moon past midnight. Here we go. What's the line? What's the line? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. What is it? What is it? Wow. My stars, this... Never in a million moons have I had a date such as exquisite as this one. It was the million moons line? Wow. That's a good one. I like that one because that one was completely improvised. That was improvised. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure everybody who was listening in liked that one. 
because I distinctly, distinctly remember cheering, and somebody threw their arms up in the air, and then people were like, in the in the background, I believe, because I was on Skype, but it was it was funny, it was a good time. I'm um, just about ready to pack it in. A few bites of ice cream from the freezer. I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if a man is still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I hear a faint sound. Oh no, I forgot she's crying. Oh no. Oh no. Amanda. Don't cry. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> Don't cry, my sweet child. In the dark, I see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. I kind of want to pursue it. Because I have the habit of like leaving people alone and not getting part of the story. That happened with Matt. And I didn't kind of pursue the whole thing about his wife and I didn't hear any part of that story so come on Amanda please okay never mind I okay 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 I'm sorry I'm sorry Amanda I won't do it again oh no I can't even remember the last time she snapped at me like that I have a hard time falling asleep but when I finally do I'm still thinking about Amanda Oh no, after a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever, uh, lever up and takes her still freezer burn waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. I'm, it's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on the wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. Uh, I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream, and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make matters worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. Here we go, it's the cake. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. And there is a another buggo. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just... Whatever it is... This bug is annoying. Just... Get out, bug. And you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Honey... You know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. And that's cake. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. And this is beautiful. Strawberry. Amanda gives me a big ol' hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. 
the other one. I guess you're not technically wrong. It's good to have fallbacks like that one. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away. You know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head but for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. So, another important piece of information is... Oh, God. This is embarrassing. I... Um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa, I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Aww. Anyway, so the only person I told about this crush was Emma R., and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just kept quiet and kept going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day, I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them e uh, ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we're out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Emma, or Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. Screw you guys for eating nachos without my precious baby bean, my bouncing child. Oh no. My happy slice of family. I don't know. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around MR, which is kind of weird, right? Noah, don't be dumb. But then they kiss. Noah, what are you doing, Noah? No. Uh, no, uh, that's bad. Yes, I know, so I storm over there, and I'm like, hey, and Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does, and Emma R. just, like, glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing's coming up, I don't know who that is. Grace is the... gossipy one? I know! Thank God I knew that. Grace is the, only, uh, the one nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed, and I just wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nachos. Might I add, which only further contributed to this shitty day, and immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat, asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R, asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and... Sorry, I know that's a lot. Are you still following? What did Emma R say? Oh, okay, get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what, let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, I do not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me. I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. Oh, no. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's being a really terrible friend. And she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. I was like, okay. And then she left me on read. And then, wait, left me on read. What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply. And I know because there are read receipts or read, 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 text messages. I don't know what read or read receipts, read, read texts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff, and then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and it's like, how could you say that about me? I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. I'm your friend. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but Emma R has been there since Dad died. Oh yeah, I said that Geo had a husband. I should have gotten that figured out when we started, but yeah. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. 
I'm not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied about uh, lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda, my child. Amanda looks so dejected I almost can't take it. What can I possibly say to help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know, it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. How would I say it's dumb? No. It's a stupid thing to be upset over. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Right? God, Emma. I, me too, I would eat nachos with her. Um, real friends don't do that. When you get older, you start realizing the, uh, the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing. If they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Wait, I, kn I love this line. Hold on, I just want to hear Amanda say it. Hey, Pops. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. I love you too, Dad. Love you too, Amanda. Love you so much. What a good kid. Good kid. Good kid. All right. Let's see. We are on the third and final date. Let's see if anything has changed in the time that whatever is happening. All right. We are on the last date. Let me just right quick let... The the twit twitters no the, the the tweeters We are on the third and final date There's still some time for goth dad Goth that action Goth that action We're getting some goth that action in here guys Alrighty righty Now that Everything is good to go. Alrighty. How's everybody holding up so far? It's been a lot of game. I know it has. It's been two hours. Two hours, and people are still here. So glad that people stuck around for all of this. It's a good time. Uh, so when everything... Get a quick drink of Dr. Pepper. Because this is like reading an audiobook. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go through Damien's final date. And then, if anyone wants to stick around, just chat, uh, questions, fan art, talk about weird things. I don't know. Memes. Memes. Stay for the memes. Um, so here we go. Third date with the boy. Uh, I can commit. I'm sure this is my dream daddy. <laughs> uh, my vocals are pretty good, actually. This voice isn't all that hard to do, really. Um, it's actually... A voice that I do to mess with my roommate when I'm at school. Uh, we just joke around 
Um, I'd say weird things to her from like across the room or when she's sleeping, I'll creep up and I'll whisper weird stuff to her and she'll freak out. She did it at my house once. She was sitting in the basement and uh, she fell asleep while we were watching series of unfortunate events, the one on Netflix. And she fell asleep and I walked over and I whispered something. Um, I whispered something to her and she woke up. Well, she didn't wake up. She moved to like swat at her ear, but she just put her hand on her ear and just the action of putting her hand on her face woke her up and scared her. So <laughs> that was probably the funniest thing ever. And I launched myself across the entire length of the basement because I thought she was going to punch me. But <laughs> we still make fun of her because of that, and it's a, it's a good time. So every time we talk about Damien and Damien's voice and things that I recorded for Damien, um, it just ends up us joking about that meme voice, and we can never see it the same way again now. We can never see Damien the same way because it's just us goofing off. So that's a fun story. Fun story. So here we go, final date. Ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We go on nighttime strolls uh, pretty regularly. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through dad book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of his old signet rings to use as a seal for my letters, and I just couldn't say no. Hanging out with that goth dad again? Yes, I'm hanging out with that goth dad again. Yes, he is here, goth dad. Please, Amanda, you know his name. And yes. Be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him in into our household that one time, and I've seen the Lost Boys, and I honestly would have preferred trying to see if he could have just walked through the threshold of our home under his own power. Yes, Amanda, I have become Damien's familiar. I am compelled under his curse. I'm sorry, sweetie. Turn into a bat? I don't think... What's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? Well, okay, I'm off. Are you taking the car, or are you flying off into the night on the leathery wings of a bat? One of those. While I'm out, can you throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die? That would be great. I'm keeping it there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. He here! He! Hello. Damien and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape. I mean cloak. He hates it when people call it a cape. Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. This is going to seem like a silly question, but why do goths wear black? Gothic sub- Oh, I'm supposed to be reading it. What am I doing? I'm, I'm freaking out here. Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, so it would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning. Interesting enough, though, was that in the Victorian era, Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. I have another question. Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? You mentioned in the graveyard that it helps you appreciate your life, or something. Ah, I've experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept that death is simply a part of living. It's the single universal truth for every human who has ever lived. I am going to die, you are going to die, and life carries on without us. Does that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the advances of modern science, death was anywhere in the Vic was everywhere in the Victorian era, and yet funerals were major social functions. Victorians were obsessed with mementos of their loved ones, even going so far as to take elaborately staged photographs of their dead, of uh, their dead relatives. Good lord. <laughs> oh, Damien, why do you speak these words? Yeah, mourning was so complex. <laughs> mourning was so complex that there were set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on who in your life had passed. Now, we don't have any of that. If you lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself. 
because we have no modern equivalent of these formalities. We need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel that loss fully, but not allow it to consume us. So no, I am not afraid of death. I believe it is a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it. The time we have here is brief and fleeting and occasionally cruel, but it is, all it is at all times precious. To stare death in the face and live despite that, I think, is a noble existence. Let's save the morning for the dead. Wow, that's beautiful. I can see the moonlight and the bay glint off of Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn to the harbor and watch ships pass, breathing in the salty sea air. I look to Damien again and can't help but be entranced by his charm, his mystery. I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean in closer to Damien, closing my eyes as I do so. Oh no, ringtone! <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have to take this. Cock blocked. Mary, Mary, why? Why do you do these things? Damien steps away from me to answer his phone. Oh no, I hope it isn't Lucian again. After speaking in hushed tones for a few moments, Damien returns to me. Everything okay? Ross! God, I thought... I thought it was done. I thought it was done. No! Oh no, and there's a bug bite on my leg. How did that happen? Oh, good times. There's an emergency. Dun, 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 dun. Emergency man, here we go. Lucian? No, thankfully, but... I must take my leave. Oh, okay. Is there anything I can do to help? Mm. Dads do have to stick together, right? You know it, buddy, pal, amigo. Then come. There isn't time to waste. Away! That this is the, this is them flying away. I guess. After a short drive in silence, we arrive at a rundown building on the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. Dun, dun, dun. I push the surprisingly heavy door open and find myself in a dimly lit waiting room. A few rickety chairs line the walls, and there doesn't seem to be anyone behind the front desk. There are a few paintings and pictures on the wall, but they're so nondescript that I'm still unsure of what kind of place this even is. Wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. Damien walks off down a corridor, his, boots heel, his boot heels echoing through the halls of this seemingly empty building. Distant howls echo from someplace I can't see, and there's a faint scratching sound like claws on tile. I cautiously peek down the hall and find stall after stall of scared-looking dogs. A few of them notice me and skitter up to the chain-link fence, sticking their noses through to sniff the air. What have I gotten myself into? Suddenly... The lights will flicker on and off. Just <laughs> the lights shut off. I panic, unsure of where I am or how I can get out. I stumble through the darkness, my breathing getting heavier and heavier. Damien? The light finally turns back on. Hey, sailor. Hey, Mary. How's it going? Mary, what are you doing here? You aren't here for the fight club? I, uh, I don't want to get punched in the face. Great, because this is an animal shelter. <laughs> a what? We take care of stray animals, and then people adopt the stray animals. Didn't you see the pets when you walked in? Oh, I just... Sorry. Didn't really expect to see you volunteering at an animal shelter. Wow. Okay, kid. Way to put me in a box. Dames, you hear this baloney? Just... One moment. Thunder cracks and a door bursts open, appearing from the shadows I see. IT Man. <laughs> Hello, IT Man. Damien. What are you doing here? Um, hey. It's Damien. He looks completely different. No cloak, no Victorian era clothing, no makeup. I wasn't planning to share this side of me until much later, but I'm not as goth as you think. I, uh, I'm a systems administrator for the IT department of a realty company. Yeah, a realty company. I wear tennis shoes to work, and I listen to Bruce Springsteen. 
I enjoy going to the hardware store and looking at storage solutions, and I volunteer at this animal shelter in my spare time. I'm boring. I'm fascinated with Victorian history and the goth lifestyle, but that much is true. It's just not all that I am, and I need you to know that. Oh, I, uh... Hate to kill the moment here, but there's some pressing business that needs attending to. Ah! Almost did it to me again, but not as much. Oh, right. It's Duchess Cordelia. Again? Who's Duchess Cordelia? She's one of the pups. Gets hot all the time. She somehow learned how to open doors, and now she's unstoppable. When did she get out? This morning. I went to go sing... Sea shanties to the cats. <laughs> I, I forgot about this. That's probably why I brought back my sea shanties. Mary, you're killing me. When I came back, she had already bolted. I have to stay here with the pets, so I need you two to go and find her and sing her sea shanties. Of course. Where could she be? She always ends up running off to the same places. Here, let me draw you a map. Mary starts scribbling on the back of a pet adoption form. She's very smart, ruthless even. You need to stay on your toes and get her back by sundown, or else she turns into a werewolf and starts eating people. What? You're a perfect little peach, Geo. We just don't want her to be stuck outside when it's cold. I see shanties again. Sea shanties might come later. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I'll grab some treats and we can hit the road. Damien and I look over the map Mary created for us. Best map! Best map! This is my favorite map. Oh man, I'm Nerd's House. I love how Brian is Mario Batali. Fantastic. Oh, man. Wait a minute. I'm so con- Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, who's Nerd's house? I was like, oh, wait, that's Hugo. Congrats, kiddo. Where should we head first? Let's just go down in order. Okay. Damien and I exit the parking lot and start driving toward town. I look over to him. He seems concerned. Shouldn't be too hard to find the Duchess, right? She's a pretty big pup. Mary wasn't kidding when she said that dog was smart. One time, she correctly guessed the winner of the Kentucky Derby. It was a really great year for Bark Bark Bark. Hmm. I, I don't know. What do you think our odds are, Gio? Wait, he's Mario Batal. I thought... Wait, then... Oh, Brian is other nerd. Gotcha. 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 Uh... Gotta stay positive. Oh, come on, where did that go? Oh, there it is. My dad once told me, Geo, you can't shove raisins up your nose. That hurt my feelings. I felt discouraged, but I kept a positive attitude, and you know what? I made it happen. Ew. It might have landed me in the ER and forced me to have ten golden raisins removed from my nasal cavity, but on that day, I learned that anything is possible if you have a good attitude and abnormally large nostrils. Young children really are resilient, I suppose. See, I knew Brian was Mario Batali. What in the... Oh, my neighbor's dog is having a fit. It's Duchess Cordelia. <laughs> Just kidding, it's a tiny puppo. He is small. Haha, <laughs> yes, young children. I was 16. Let's just hope for the best. We got this. Hey, this is Mario Batali himself. We drive through the cul-de-sac and everything seems to be pretty normal. Looks like Brian's doing some yard work. We pull into Brian's driveway and hop out. I don't even know. I'll just read Brian normally. Hey, don't step on the grass I just moved. 
Have you seen any unusual activity in the area today? Aside from your underwater lawn. Oh, here we go. How dare you? I take my lawn care very seriously. Gio, please. You haven't seen a dog run through here, have you? Well, a little while ago, I heard Maxwell barking at something. When I came outside, the garden had been torn to shreds. It's gonna take forever to retill the soil. Huh. That could be a dog, or a rather feisty raccoon. Whatever it was, it must have been hungry. I ate all my tomatoes. I'm very sorry to hear about your garden. If you need assistance restoring it to its former glory, please don't hesitate to contact me. Oh. Will do, buddy. Good luck finding that dog. Oh, she's probably still hungry. I wonder if she's looking for more food elsewhere. Uh, coffee spoon. Here we go. We park in front of Matt's coffee shop and walk inside. It seems like a slow day. Matt sits behind the counter, reading a book. Hey, Matt. Didn't expect to see you two today. What's up? Have you seen any strange dogs around? Actually, yeah. I caught one digging through the trash earlier. It ran away when I tried to get closer, though. Did you see what direction it ran in? Matt thinks for a second. Might have been running east, I think. That pup tore through three pans of old, grateful banana bread. Want to take some for the road, just in case? Sure thing. Matt packages up a slice. Thanks for the slice. The road slice. This banana bread is going to be so good. I think he meant to give it to you for the dog. Right, I meant it's going to be so good for the dog to eat. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I feel like we're on the right track. You think? If we keep this up, we'll find the Duchess in no time. Hey, if you like dogs so much, why don't you have any? Oh, Lucian is severely allergic. I, I wouldn't put him through that. But there are still dogs in my life, so for that, I'm grateful. A plus, Damien. Get those doggos in your life. There's about to be one more dog in your life, buddy. Splendid attitude. Let's not waste any more time. Verily. All right, let's go. Let's just keep going, I guess. We drive to the softball field. It looks like Craig's team is practicing. I wonder if any of the kids saw something. Craig spots us and jogs over. Softball bat slung over his shoulder. Hey, bros. What's up? Craig, you wouldn't have happened to see a dog around here, have you? One escaped from the animal shelter, and we're trying to locate her. Hmm, I don't think so. Maybe one of the girls saw something. Girls? Hi, Amanda's dad. Hi, Lucian's dad. We have names. Girls, have you seen any dogs around? There was a big dog here earlier. She ran off a while ago, though. Don't think she had an owner, but I really wanted to play. We tried to play fetch with her, but she just took the softball and ran. I think she ate it, actually. She was a lot of she was a lot of dog. Here, take another softball. It might come in handy later. Many thanks, Craig. Thanks, Craig. What a good kid. I actually wanna go back to the cold side. Uh uh-oh, Hugo's front door is wide open. Oh, I didn't know you could just jump. Oopsie. She can open doors. This is classic Duchess Cordelia, a telltale sign. We should approach with caution. Whatever goes down in there, got your back. We creep up to the porch and step inside. There, sitting in the center of Hugo's living room like she owns the damn place, is one of the biggest dogs I've ever seen. Woof. <laughs> Well, she hasn't broken anything in here yet. Wonderful. Now all we have to do is get this leash on her before she tries to escape again and get out of here before Hugo comes home. Easy peasy. Duchess, come here. The Duchess eyes Damien warily. As he approaches, she begins to growl. She's on her guard. We need another plan. Take the bread! I reach into my pocket and pull out the... Ooh, hearts... I reach my pocket and pull out the slice of grateful banana bread Matt gave me. Duchess sniffs the air and hones it on the bread. Ooh, I gotta give me some of that, Dr. Pep. Come here, girl. Nice and easy. I've got some yummy homemade vegan and possibly gluten-free banana bread, if that's what you're into. The Duchess cautiously approaches me and gives the bread a good sniff before gently taking it from my hand and dropping it on the ground, like dogs always do for some reason. 
She curls up and starts munching on the bread. Success. Damien walks up behind the Duchess and attaches the leash to her collar. She immediately notices and starts whining. It's time to go home now, Duchess. Damien gives a tug on the leash. She won't move. Duchess, what happened to our rapport? You and I used to be bosom buddies. She still doesn't move. She's huge. There's no way we could even try to lift her. Well, this is a weird situation to be in. I think we're literally trespassing in our friend's house with this large dog. Oh, I forgot what I did for Ernest. Oh, what are you nerds doing? <laughs> Ernest stands in the doorway with a plate of pizza rolls. Uh, um, uh, we're definitely not trespassing. Looks like trespassing. Well, yeah. It just looks like that. Damien, what are we doing? Um, trespassing. Oh, no! Damien, my son, I'm sorry. I have wronged you in this way. You do me in Oh, no! No, I messed up. New. No, the Duchess notices Ernest and starts pulling against the leash. Why is this dog in my house? It's along. The Duchess suddenly breaks free from Damien's grip and hurdles towards Ernest. Towards the carrier. Oh no, no, there's a dog on me. <laughs> Ernest and the Duchess fall to the ground. Pizza rolls fly everywhere. This is bad. Ernest, are you okay? Ernest feeds the Duchess a pizza roll. Hey, she likes pizza. Oh. Hey, she likes pizza rolls. <laughs> this kid. Ernest sits up, but the dog keeps licking his face. Oh, hey. Hugo stands at the door, looking like he's at a loss for what? words. What's... Why are you guys... Whose dog is this? It's a long story, but it involves a large dog who knows how to open doors. Borf. Hugo, may I present to you Duchess Cordelia? <sighs> how do you do? Borf. <laughs> we are friends. <laughs> the Duchess looks at Ernest's face. She's from the local animal shelter. She got out, and we've been chasing her all around town. Your house was her final stop. Actually, she probably could have gone to the other places, but I accidentally skipped them. He dead. Can we keep her? <sighs> Ernest, I don't know if we're set up to take care of her. Wait, did you just call me dad? Come on, please. Look at how cute she is. Hugo sighs. We had been talking about adopting a dog for a while. But you have to promise that you'll take care of her. Yeah, I'll give her all the pizza rolls her little heart desires. Borf, borf. I suddenly remember what's on the back of the map and pull a pen out of my pocket. I've got the forms ready for you if you're interested. I'll even waive the adoption fee since, you know, we're, we technically broke into your house. Household. That is a longer word. Well, all right, it's a deal. Hugo steps on the porch with us and signs the form while Ernest plays with the Duchess inside. He sure seems to be happy with his new friend. Oh. I know, he called me dad. Can you believe it? Damien places a hand on Hugo's shoulder. I certainly can. I think this will be really good for Ernest. It should teach him some responsibility. You should probably look into getting better locks on your doors, though. The Duchess is a wily one, but do right by her and she'll love you too forever. Thank you. Yeah. And long story short, the Duchess now lives in a happy home, and neither of us were charged with breaking and entering. So all in all, I think it was a fine day's work. Nice work, you two. Geo, you could be a value asset to our team of volunteers, you know. If you ever feel like petting some puppies, hit me up. I would gladly call you to, to pet some puppies... Man, I love petting puppies. Mary, I always feel like petting puppies. Good to know. Well, I'll catch you fellas later. Mary starts to leave. And one last thing. Damien's been telling me about you. Glad he finally brought you around. Oh, yeah. Damien's my special boy. I love him. We go way back, and I got a vested interest in his health, success, and well-being. If you ever hurt him. Mary. You can fill in the blanks. I go. Yes, ma'am. Mary leaves me alone with Damien. So, about the whole goth thing. 
I, um, completely understand if you aren't interested in me anymore. What? Am I missing something here? I'm not a cool goth prince. I'm boring. I own five pairs of tennis shoes. I wear dumb glasses. Don't you care? You look so nervous. Damien, do you really think I only like you because of all the goth stuff? That's all cool, but the best thing about you is how passionate you are about the things you love. History, art, Victorian fashion, dogs, storage solutions. It doesn't matter what it is. You care, and that's awesome. And also, the glasses are very cute. I'll, I'll agree with you there, Geo. You don't think I'm boring at all? If you're boring, then I don't know what that makes me. I spend too much time online shopping for, fa for flashlights. I get excited to mow my lawn on Saturdays. I get cranky about commercials being too loud, and I've even been thinking about making my own peanut butter. Then maybe we can be boring together? It would never be boring if it was with you. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Damien suddenly closes the gap between us and pulls me into a hug. He buries his face in my shoulder. His hair smells like lavender and rosemary. I was so scared you wouldn't like me. Quite the opposite. Damien pulls away for a second and looks me in the eyes. Without the colored contacts, his eyes are so dark and soulful. May I kiss you? Oh no, I forget which one to do. I think I said, does a, a bat have wings? Because I thought it was funny. And I don't know if that was good or not. <laughs> I forget. Oh, man. Um. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes! Hearts! I did, I done good, kids. Ah, I believe I have my answer, then. He smiles slightly and leans in, giving me a gentle kiss. Damien pulls away and gives me an intense look. Do you want to help me take care of the puppies? Yes. Always. Oh no, I should have done Thou Art Welcome. I'm just now seeing these. I've goofed. I've goofed. No, no, oh, I've done too many gooferies in this last one. <laughs> Damien and I arrive back at the cul-de-sac, our fingers intertwined. Like a proper gentleman, he walks me to my doorstep. That was lovely. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for everything. I'm very happy I can be myself around you. I'm glad, but I have one request. What's that? Can we keep sending each other letters but of course damien kisses me one last time before turning around and heading home yeah amanda runs back to the couch from the window and tries to look as nonchalant as possible a second time hello father i was sitting here on the couch this entire time hi amanda so are you guys like starting a vampire coven together oh plot twist Mothman. Damien's actually Mothman. Eh, eh, eh. Where I don't. Oh no! I deleted the air horn app on my phone. Dang it! Dang it! I can't air horn now. Curses! That's a no. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. I didn't see it coming either. Genius. Well. Whatever's happening, I'm really glad you two are happy. You deserve it, Dad. Aw, shucks. I'm gonna head to bed. Catch you in the morning? Sure thing. I make my way to my room, fall into my bed, uh, with my heart full, ex my heart full, excited for the days to come. Oh my gosh, you're right! Where is the car? Oh, which line, which line? What is it? Simply a majestic evening. I didn't get an S because I goofed it. How? How? I'm a disgrace. Disgraceful. Throw me out onto the curb. 
Get rid of my body. Throw it into the garbage heap. Oh no. I have lost everything this day. Oh no. And the game froze. Okay. We're almost done. Ah, uh, I am bitter. I'm so bitter. Gotta act natural. And not bitter. Okay, be a Bee Gees. Okay, Bee Gees. Bee Gees. Awesome. God. Ugh, I'm so mad. Man walks through the door with a suspicious look on her face. Wow, Dad. Hey, Dad. You didn't get an S rank on that last. Something's fishy. Yep, super fishy. I didn't get an S rank on the last date. Rats. Sorry, sweetie. It's the feds. Life of a crime. Of crime. They found me. They know I didn't get an S rank. They know. They got another thing coming. I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah? I can tell. You're very bad at lying. Amanda, my dear, would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father, it would fill my heart with grief. Yeah, Duchess stole a car. <laughs> she took the car, and she's gone. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but... Aw, oh, Dad, you... I dramatically whipped the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figure you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long-haul paranormal ice road ghost truckers. This is all 19 seasons, and there is another... Oh, it's the same... Gosh darn bug. And bonus material, including commentary with f f actual ghosts featured on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pigskin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. Here we go. Goodness gracious. A family. A family can be one girl and her eight. Eight dads. You told me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal out of your accomplishments. So consider this your graduation party. Surprise! Dad, everyone's here. Well, yeah, everyone wanted to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is. Fully customizable down to the type of mac. And there's an ice cream cake. The good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go have fun with your pals, all right? I'm so proud of you, Amanda. Uh, Amanda smiles and runs to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. I walk over to Mary, who's having a lively conversation with Amanda. We have a real fluffy Samoyed right now. His name's Harold, loves belly rubs, he always tries to lick your face if you get too close. Mrs. Christensen, thank you so much for telling me in great detail about every single dog currently at the animal shelter. Please, tell me about the Af uh, the Afghan with the three legs. I thought an Afghan was just a blanket. I didn't know it was a type of dog. Well, uh, sure, Quadro we call him. It's one of those ironic names. You know, if you're really interested, I could probably steal one for you. Really? Nah, but I could get you in to meet all of them. We always could use extra hands around the shelter. If those extra hands also happen to steal a dog, I'm glad you two are able to bond over cute dogs. Really warms my heart. Dad, we're having a moment. Hey, Sailor, your kid's a good egg. Best egg. Where's your goth prince? You two are usually attached to the hip these days. He's, uh, he's, he's around. Stellar. Mary turns her attention to Amanda. It's not too hard to sneak a dog into college. Trust me, I did it plenty back in the day. At one point, I had three cats living in my dorm. I decided to leave them to it. All of a sudden, a huge dog leaps up into my arms. Oh yeah, Judges! <laughs> you go in earnest, run up to me. I hate that. The Duchess gives my face a few broad licks and hops down. We're working on that. Got her in a disciplinary class. Hey! 
Finn. Finn's here. Hey, Finn. <laughs> I don't mind at all. <laughs> Looks like the three of you are getting along nicely. She's a valuable addition to the clan. If I hold up my oh, if I hold up my homework in front of her, she'll eat it. God, Ernest, please don't. Cool. Uh, we'll deal with that later. Just as Cordelia spots a squirrel and darts across the yard, Ernest follows her, laughing. He's actually been a lot more manageable lately. I think taking care of the dog is good for him. Thanks for breaking into my house. I guess. Anytime. Geo. Brian, you made it. Ha, huh, I don't pass up on good Mac. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Screw you, Brian. <laughs> Just not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. Don't let him bait you, don't let him bait you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi, Amanda's dad. Hey, Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? <laughs> This is a really... I said that so passive-aggressively. I apologize. This is a really great party. Thanks so much for inviting us. You're very welcome, tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian and I lock eyes. This isn't over. Hey, bro. Sup, dude? This is a real rager. Taking our older age into, uh, yeah, taking our older age into consideration. I'm trying to be in bed at a reasonable hour tonight. Don't want to get too wild. Don't worry, dude. I'll keep an eye on your fruit punch intake. You know, I'm really glad we're bros again. Me too, dude. Dude. Briar and Hazel peek out behind Craig. Hi, little ones. Hello. Hiya. Thank you for the all that. Thank you for the all that ice cream cake. Wait, girls. How much of that did you eat? Briar ate four pieces. Ask any witness. No, he didn't. Hazel ate four pieces and wants to pin it on me because we look alike. I have your face. Nobody will ever believe you. Oh boy. I'll let you guys figure this out. Good seeing you, Craig. Let's hang out soon, yeah? Let's yes. hang. Totally. Tell Amanda congrats for us. You can tell her yourself. You live in the neighborhood. Looks like you've settled into this neighborhood quite nicely. Yep, couldn't ask for a better cul-de-sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully we'll see you at more church events. We got a big sacrifice, I mean schedule, planned for the rest of the year. Whoa, did I let that one, s oh yikes, haha, -ha. schedule, come pray with us, we're children of Jesus. Sure thing, Joseph. And maybe, if you aren't doing anything later, we could hang out sometime. I have no friends. <laughs> Joseph, that'd be great. Oh man. Well, see you later. <laughs> Hugo comes up to me with a plate of mac and cheese. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Gio. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to her dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too. That scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends not to see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey! Congratulations on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Haha, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Amanda starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. Oh. You're right. Go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah, I'm going to break anything I want, and there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about that time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Ah. Nope. Oh. And I'll have you know that the globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so... She'll fit into college just fine. Hey. Hey. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. <laughs> Good stuff. Yup. See you later. <laughs> Bye. He's so uncomfortable, and I love it. Man. Hey, man. Matt! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college. I'll have a fresh batch of the talking banana breads ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. Oh, I forgot. Um, what did I do for him? Hey, Amanda's dad. I turn to spot Lucian, walking up to me. Yes, Lucian? Thanks for inviting me to your party. Anytime, bud. 
bud. I know we had a rocky start, but I'm glad to know you. I hope you know how much your dad cares about you, and how much I care about your dad. And how often we mac. And cheese! Kidding! Ha ha! See that mac and cheese bar? <laughs> My dad's had a rough couple of years, and I know that it must not have been easy to raise me alone. He's kind of a weird guy, but I love him a lot, and he seen, and it seems like you make him happy. So, you're cool in my book. Thank you, Lucian. That means a lot to me. Sure. And let me know if you want me to give you a stick and poke sometime. Oh, yeah, stick and poke. On his arm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stick and pokes are not fun to get done. Oh, sky dramatically changed. As the party starts to wind down, I take a seat on our back porch step. Yeah. The sun is setting and everyone seems to have eaten their fill. Amanda walks over and sits down next to me. Killer party, Pops. What can I say? I was inspired. So, I, uh, I also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but... Growing up wasn't easy, but it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been to prepare me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. And once you get to college, Amanda, you'll realize that you will love being there sometimes more than being home. <laughs> Don't cry. Don't cry. I swear to God, Gio, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. <laughs> Anyway, that was enough emotional vulnerability for one day. <laughs> Present time! Amanda hands me a tiny wrapped package. I tear the wrapping off to find a framed photo, picture, of me and Amanda. I can't read English. It's us. Kind of shocking. All of our photo albums are just pictures of me. Uh, pictures of me, huh? I figured we needed at least one together before I leave. Amanda, thank you. Watching you grow, uh, watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock 'em dead, kid. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, I'm gonna break so much stuff, intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably gonna have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda hops up. Looks like someone's been waiting to talk to you. I glance over to the back of the yard, where Damien is sitting on a bench beneath our cherry blossom tree. He smiles at me. I'll leave you to it. Me and the Emmas are going to go get ice cream. <laughs> Love you, pops. Pew pew. Amanda runs off to join her friends. I take a seat next to Damien as the last guests make their way out of the party. Did you know? that in the Victorian era they would call benches CD boys. What, really? <laughs> I'm kidding, Gio, but what if? It's good to see you in your civvies again. Thank you. I had a revelation the other day, Gio, and I think it was largely due to your continued influence upon me. There was a version of myself that might have been embarrassed to show you my true form, my information technology form, but what you said about me how my passion was what you truly admired. That emboldened, uh, that, yeah, that emboldened me to feel like myself regardless of how I choose to dress and act. Instead of separate entities, they are simply different facets of myself. A three-dimensional human being with his own thoughts, wants, and needs. I love dressing the way that I do, but feeling constricted by what I thought was my own personal brand made me lose sight of why I did this in the first place, to make myself happy. I place my hand on Damien's and feel a light squeeze. Looking up, I'm greeted by Damien's warm smile. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> I'm trying to be more comfortable with who I am, rather than dwelling on who I could be to, another, to other people. I can't stop smiling. I'm so proud of him! <laughs> Damien, I'm so happy you've realized that you can be a dog-loving goth. Me too, Gio. Me too. I feel myself inching closer and closer to Damien. I go to brush a lock of hair out of his face. I'm shocked at how soft it is. How is your hair so soft? Dog shampoo. 
I keep running my hands through his hair as he leans closer to me, placing a hand on the side of my face. He strokes my cheek with his thumb. I don't even know what this is. You know, public displays of affection were considered scandalous in the Victorian era. Damien pulls me in for a kiss. The third one. All three. But I think I can make an exception for you. Dun to dun! Dads! Dads. Don't trust anybody who likes their meat well done. <laughs> Yay! We did it, folks! We did it! We made it to the end of Damien's route. Yay! That was... That's really funny. This took exactly the amount of time that I thought it would take to get through it. Oh, man. That... Spot on. Spot on. I still have, like, one sip of Dr. Pepper left, and I haven't taken a bite of my burger yet, but... That'll... Ah! Big bug. I think. I don't know where he went. Alrighty. So, Dream Daddy, Damien's Root, officially over. We did it, kids. So It only took almost three hours. Um, it was a fun time. It was really fun. I loved playing this game from day one when it came out. Uh, I still There are still some things that I haven't done yet that I still want to do. Uh, like, I, I don't think I've played through all of the end dates for everybody else. Um, but I know about them. I haven't played any of Robert's... No, I played the first Robert date. <laughs> I love you too, Finn. I played Robert's first date, and uh, I have played nothing for Joseph yet, because I don't know how I want to go about that, and which order I want to play them in. But, hopefully, I'll get around it, uh, around to it at some point, so that should be fun. Um, now that the game is officially done, well, this route is officially done Zeru, and we have nothing else to do, what do you guys want to do? We could talk for a little bit. It is 1046, if anybody has to get going, completely understand. Um, but I, I'll be here, I will be hanging out, that's a lot of names. All those dads. Uh, I'll be here for a little while. I can bring up the chat on my screen. Um, I can close, or I can just leave the game up on the home screen for a little bit. So if anybody has any questions they want to ask, any fan art they want to send, any thing. Oh, the picture. I forgot. He's gorgeous. Gorgeous boy. Actually, you know what? I will leave. I'm going to leave it on this screen. Oh, what the heck? The floating book? What floating book? What floating book? I don't see a floating book anywhere. Oh, over he here? There? This? Where? Where is this floating book? I don't see any. Over here? This? This thing? Right here? I don't know what, I don't know what this mystery floating book is. Oh, we have people from Britain here. I just noticed that. <laughs> um, if you're talking about that over there, wait, what is that? Oh, that in the distance is a blanket, because that's my bed. That. This over here is just a regular bookshelf. Um, there's just a bunch of books stacked up on it. Um, that thing that is spinning on your right side. My right, behind you. There. This? Oh! Like, that over there is a bookshelf. This here... Oh, that was my chair. My chair is busted. It's a ukulele. That's what was over here. It was just a bunch of stickers. So, I think you were looking at the stickers. That might have been what it was. I had that there, because I don't know why, but I was like, you know, Phantom of the Opera today. That dangly thing? This light thing? Oh. You mean this? The spinning thing? 
What? I don't see a spinning thing. Ah, in front of the bookshelf. Oh, this. Okay, this. Okay, I see what you're talking about. That this is actually um, it's a bunch of. Well, it's a like one of those lanyard things. Um, it's a bunch of badges from different conventions that I've gone to, and I just kind of put them all on the same uh, lanyard. And then I tie it onto the the little thing on my fan on the ceiling. It's the light switch. And I tied it all up there because I'm too lazy. And I just reach over and I grab the uh, I grab the badges and I just kind of pull it to turn the light off. So that's what that is. <laughs> I, I first I was like, what is floating? I didn't know if you could actually see the badges, but apparently you can. And <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, there we go. We figured it out. Figured it out. It's all the con uh, the convention badges. So that's what those are. I think I have about uh, probably like a little over ten. So I want to say like anywhere from twelve to fifteen badges on that um, on that lanyard. And hopefully I'll be adding more because uh, next week I'm going to try to go to Otakon in uh, DC. For a couple days, um, I have something on Saturday, so unfortunately I won't be there for the entirety of Saturday. Uh, and somebody um, dropped a somebody um, couldn't room with the group of people that I'm going with, so uh, I don't think we're gonna. I'm gonna be there Thursday. I'm coming Friday definitely, and then a little bit Saturday morning. I'm probably gonna be leaving around twelve ish in the afternoon on Saturday um, and then in October I'm going to be at New York Comic Con on that Friday because that's the only day when my roommate and my girlfriend are free so we're all going on that Friday and then the only other con that I can think of in the near future would be Anime Boston which is in the spring so those are the three. I'm trying to see if I can hit MAGFest, but I will be out of town for Christmas to spend it with some friends in Australia uh, until my birthday. And I'll be coming home on my birthday, a 36-hour birthday of nothing but just goofing off, and it's going to be great. So it's going to be fun. Um, yeah. That's, those are all the cons that I really have kind of lined up. If anything is subject to change, I'll probably write it down. I know, I want to go to more conventions and try different ones. Because uh, I think ever since the game dropped, really, and people have been expressing like so much interest for it, all I've really wanted to do was just... I mean, my mind right now is just go to conventions and talk to people and, like, meet people. And I really want to buy as much fan-made merchandise as I can for the game because I'm crazy. But that's just... It's because of the game. And everybody who's talked to me so far has been super nice. Uh, a bunch of people have been just coming out of the woodworks to talk about, um, like, their, their personal situations. Uh, just to think... Well, they've been thinking me about uh, how Damien has kind of been like a really progressive character, and I didn't, I didn't write Damien. I just did dad noises and the end of the the whatever the end of the dates, those voices and lines. But um, but yeah, people have been coming around to talk about how Damien has kind of like affected them personally and how much they relate to him and some of the things that he's experienced, gone through, and worked through, and it's kind of inspiring them to do it too. And one of the reasons why I love Damien as much as I do, apart from the fact that I'm slightly biased, is the fact that um, the day that... A, a bunch of people have been asking me about how I became Damien, kind of, a little bit. But what had happened was a friend of me, a friend of mine, Madeline, who is Mads, who was in the chat earlier, I don't know if she's still here? I don't know. 
But uh, one morning she texted me a photo of a tweet that she saw about somebody looking for trans male and non-binary voice actors. And from seventh grade, I was one of those kids that would do a bunch of like random fan dubs from animes and video games just for fun, just to goof around when there was nothing else to do. And I just recently, this past fall, into spring actually, I started getting back into voice acting for fun. Um, I started playing um, Dangan, Dangan, Rampa, however people pronounce it, back in the, back during, no, like in November, like the end of November or October around there. And I found out that it was really fun to do impersonations of Fuyuhiko from uh, Super Danganronpa 2. And so I goofed around with that and uh, I started like recording really dumb things just for the heck of it. And I would send them to friends and just say like, hey guys, look at how close I can sound to Fuyuhiko just for fun. And it was, I don't know, I wanted to do more with that. And I had an account on the Voice Acting Alliance way back when. And so I realized that there were now projects up on Behind the Voice Actor and something called Casting Call Club. I don't know. But I made accounts on those and I just started auditioning for random things to see if I got into any projects. And so far, none of them have really taken off, but I had auditions on there. So when I emailed the mysterious email that was attached to the tweet that I received, I sent links to both of those websites to this email. And I explained, I said, hi, my name is Jason. I'm, uh, I'm, a, stu I'm a film student up in New York City. Uh, just, it'd be really cool to be able to hear more about this project. Here's some stuff that I did just for fun. Um, let me know if you can send me any information. A little later that afternoon, I got an email back. that said, hey, we really like your stuff. Uh, would you be interested in calling us to just kind of talk about the project? So I said, sure, not a problem. I sent my number and that afternoon I got a call and it was Vernon and Layton and they were super nice. They they kind of talked to me and they said, hey, are you familiar with Game Grumps? Do you, do you know this game that's coming out, Dream Daddy? Which I thought was really funny because or like two months or a month or some odd amount of time earlier, my roommate had actually sent me a picture of the characters from Dream Daddy and she was really excited because she's like, look at this. It's this dad dating game. We have to play it when we get back to school. And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know much about it, but sure, I'd love to play. So I was kind of on board for, oh, this game is going to come out, and my roommate and I are going to play it, and it's going to be fun. But when they said, oh, yeah, we're looking for voice actors for this Dream Daddy game. And I went, oh, no. I know what this is. I know what's going on here. And so we ended up emailing, uh, Vernon and I emailed for a little bit the rest of the day, and by that night, actually, we decided that we were going to record Damien's stuff on that Friday, and it was Wednesday. So I had to find either uh, a recording studio in two days, or just use the equipment that I had at home, which I wasn't very uh, confident in. So it ended up just being, I called uh, an old teacher of mine that used to teach me film and radio back in middle school, not middle school, high school. And he said, yeah, since you're an alumni, just come on in and use the studio. There's nobody here on Friday, so just come in and use the studio. So I came in and I set up my laptop and I had Skype open and then I had the microphone in front of me and then I had Audacity open on the computer in front of me and the microphone so I had all these screens around, and for a split second I forgot how to use the equipment at the school. But when I remembered, uh, Vernon and Layton called, and I th it was about it was about an hour long call, and we just ran through things like O's and ahs and oohs and sighs and screams, and then we were making up some lines for S ranks, A ranks, B, D. C, like all those different ones. Um, some of them were improvised, like the Never in a Million Moons line, that was improvised. And 
the um, take in the egg, how it kind of goes for a long period of time, and it's just really, it progressively gets more and more uncomfortable. It's just super uncomfortable by the end. And that was all improvised as well. The take in the egg part of it was, t I was told to do that. And then Vernon and Leighton just said, yeah, just make this as weird as possible. Like, make it so uncomfortable because he doesn't know. He doesn't know how to explain things well. He just knows that it's Victorian and that if you don't know it, he has to try and explain and all that stuff. So that was that, was that for, the, for the lines. So, yeah. That's all I got for that. So if anybody has any other questions about anything or wants to say anything... The chat is open, and the chat is free. I should also, while I'm hanging out here, see if anybody, while I'm here and around... Yeah. Yeah, that one was good. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it is really cool. And... So, kind of to add on to the story bit, um, the whole reason why I really like Damien and Damien's character is that Vernon and Leighton went out of their way to look for transgender voice actors to see if they wanted to be a part of this project. And I just so happened to be in the right... I had I'd sent the right things at the right times, and it ended up happening. So that's what it is. And what does Finn say? Or when you texted me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was screaming a little bit. It was, <laughs> it was weird. I think I walked around my living room about, I think I made like 40 or 50 like loops around my living room after I hung up. And I was just kind of shaking. I was like, oh, wow. What have I, what's happened? Uh, what kind of things are you into besides dads? Uh, Danganronpa. It's a, it's a really good game. Um, so I, I have yet to play Ultra Despair Girls. So I bought that when it came out on PS4 this summer. And, um, do, 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 do. and then the third one is coming out in September. So I have that pre-ordered in New York City for when I move back to my apartment. So that's cool. Um, uh, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XV because I accidentally erased all of my save files right back to the fourth chapter. So I had to restart from the fourth chapter, and it's been taking me a long time to get back because I think I was at chapter 13. So that was... that's not fun. Um, I'm really big into Overwatch. If anybody plays Overwatch... Um, are you into any musicals? I'm noticing this right now. Uh, yes. I was listening to the soundtrack of Guys and Dolls today. Uh, I listened to... Let's see... I listened to Guys and Dolls. I listened to Bye Bye Birdie a little bit. Um, some Phantom of the Opera. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Avenue Q, I saw that last fall, and that was really good. It was off-Broadway, but it was so good. Um, Singing in the Rain is my all-time favorite musical. Um, if I ever do get into theater, which I don't know about, I don't know if I'll ever do it, but when I was a kid, one of my biggest dreams was be, uh, playing Cosmo Brown in a stage version or a movie, remade movie version of um, Singing in the Rain, because he's my favorite character, and Donald O'Connor is fantastic. Uh, any other musicals? can't think of any at the moment. Uh, oh, um, Mamma Mia. It was on TV the, the other day, and it was the first time that I'd ever seen, like, the movie version. Um, my family listens to ABBA a little bit, so I know the songs, but I don't necessarily know the whole musical, and the, like, you know, the story. I mean, I know the story and a little bit about it, but I haven't seen it from start to finish. That's it. 
anything else? I don't know. I don't know. We got some people still hanging out. So, did you know that in singing in the rain movie, the water wouldn't pick up on camera, so they used blue milk. I did not know that they used blue milk. Huh, that's a little weird. I know that we, um, in some of my classes, I took a film literature class, not film literature. Uh, it was like film vocabulary and stuff like that. And we had to learn how to cut, we had to learn how to pick out when cuts were, or how long cuts were, and camera movements and all that stuff. And we talked a little bit about uh, we use singing in the rain as an example for uh, the switch to sound. So that was really cool because I was sitting in the middle row. Well, the, I sat in the second row from the front. I remember that because I sat next to two of my friends. And I was quoting the whole thing. And I think some somebody told me to shut up <laughs> when I was sitting there. Because it, the, it was the scene where uh, they, they're miking Lena for sound. And, and then... Um, the guy walks in. I forget the guy's name. The guy walks in and grabs the cord because he trips on it and he yanks it and then Lena flips back over the bench. And we were kind of going over that scene and talking about the dynamics of that. So that's another good one. Um, my roommate is really into Rent. She's been trying to get me to watch Rent with her for the longest time. And I just want to see how long it takes... For her to tire out but she's not giving up she is relentless so probably this coming fall or spring i will probably be watching rent with her uh she also um we watched what else did we watch um it was moulin rouge i have i hadn't seen moulin rouge and i watched that for the first time and that was good and then this summer I watched Chicago for the first time. So I want to get back into um, understanding musicals more and listening more to the soundtracks. I've been really hooked on the song It's Hard to Be a Bard from Something Rotten simply because D&D &D is huge in my little circle of friends. And um, two of my characters have been bards just because they're goofy to play so uh i've been listening to it's uh, hard to be a bard every time i walk to D, &D club and I'll, I'll walk there and i'll just listen to it and i'll just have it out on the streets of new york and my roommate's like please put that away don't don't do that my girlfriend's like this is like the third time the third time you've listened to that song please stop but it's good it's good Yeah, bards. Bards are awesome. Best, best time. Best time. Best character. Let's see. Something wrong. Super good. Yeah. Very nice. D&D, &D, good time. I haven't played in a while because everybody's busy and we can't get together for our online groups. And then we have the other campaign at school. Yeah! Scanlan! Scanlan, that is the reason why I have so many bards. Scanlan is the reason. Uh, Damien, what class do you think Damien would play? Ooh. You know... I'm going to try and exclude homebrew for this. Um, that's a good idea. Oh, he would be a good DM. That's not bad. Uh, I really want to say he would be a good... I, want, I think he'd be a really good rogue. I don't know. Something about that. Just stealthy. Just the stealthy... I, the, the whole idea with stealth. And... I could totally see him, like, creeping around in his cloak with, like, the hood up and everything. So, definitely, definitely that. Anyone else? I don't know how fast this... 
chat is going. Um, I don't know if I can make this bigger. I don't know if I can make the chat bigger. And pop out. Yeah, pop out. Okie dokie. Well, I don't... That didn't work. At all. And now I've lost the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Fen, for having the perfect example. What? What is happening? Oh, yeah, I still have to go through... Oh, no, I made a mistake again. Oh, he's beautiful. I just noticed that there are so many links. Oh, he's beautiful. I'm just now looking at the links that everybody sent me in the, or sent into the chat from earlier. Hey, Tracer. I was actually playing uh, Overwatch today before, um, before the stream. I played a little too long, actually. But... I was so mad. This tracer was really getting on me, and she wouldn't stop until I was dead. I was... I nearly rage quit it a few times. Yeah, Finn, you make that aesthetic board, and then you send it to me, because I, I want to see it. Do it. Do it. Because I'd, I'd love to see it, actually. Uh... Anything more? Ooh! I'm being tagged in more things on Twitter. Tag me in all the things. Because <laughs> I like seeing everybody's stuff. And I'll save it. Oh, and if you haven't already, I don't know if anybody else knows this or has gone to do it, and there's not much time left, I'm just going to say. Um, uh, today was Layton's birthday, so if you haven't already wished her a happy birthday, I'd say go do that. Junk Dad with Goku hair. Go oh, Bat Dad. Oh, Damien with a top hat on. These are so cute. Oh, I love these. These are adorable. What is this? Oh, there he's again. Flourishy, beautiful boy. Oh, my God. He's amazing. Oh, who do you main in Overwatch? Um, I main Junkrat mostly, which is why everyone... I don't know, because I had a friend in here that was goofing around saying Junkrat stuff. So I main Junkrat, and if we're th talking of support, uh, I switch between Lucio and Zenyatta, because Zenyatta is my my perfect, perfect, shiny, shiny child, and I love him. So that is that. Because sometimes people take, take Junkrat from me, and then I have to pick somebody else, and nobody likes, apparently nobody really place healers when I play, which is a bummer. So, yeah, I'm stuck with the ball boy, but I love him, so I'm not really upset. Um, I noticed because your <laughs> your your name is uh, junk ra junkie rat boy, and I went trash man. Trash man is here. Imagine Damien as a rogue is almost like imagining tuxedo mask with long hair. That's funny. Is it like, okay, if I link more of my Damien art? Always, always link your art to me, no matter where it is. Just go for it. I, I want to see all the art. Um, I'm a Tracer main. I have mad respect for Tracer mains because she blinks in and out so quickly. You can't even keep track of her. I have respect for Tracer mains and snipers, because those are so hard to play. They're so difficult, and if you can do it properly, then just props to you, because I can't. More, more playtime for you on Anna and Widow. See, I, at some point, I'm going to have to go back through the chat and look at all these art arty things. Um... I'm probably going to see it at some point. I want to look at it now. Uh, do I want to look at it now? 
because if I do, then I'm going to, hmm, let's see. Let's see, because I goofed it. All right, opening this one up. Anger Boy! Aw, oh, this is sad. <laughs> this is sad, it hurts my heart. <laughs> These two have to really work some things out, let me tell you. Oh, man. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, man. Look at him lounging all pretty-like. Oh, he's so... Mm, what a good boy. What a good boy. He's so good. I love him. I love him. Perfect boy. Perfect. Best bat dad around. Let me see, actually, if I can... Open this pop. I'm gonna try and hit pop out again. Cause it was being weird last time. It gonna work? It's gonna work this time? Oh no, don't tell me the whole chat went away. Then he is the perfect man. Perfect boy. I don't know, some of this stuff went away. I don't know why. <laughs> Ugh, that's sad. It's gone. Um, um, does anybody else have anything they want to say, ask, send, meme? Uh, so just close on Pinterest. If you have anything that you want, to send or that you have oh women and dudes in fedoras if you have anything you want to send that I might have missed uh, I don't know how to go back in the chat because it might have gone away oh yeah no problem I love like I said before I save just about any piece of artwork that I see that's been put up on tumblr and twitter and uh, I go through and I like stuff as Insta on Instagram too, so if you posted it in any of those three places, chances are I've seen it, and if I haven't liked it, then I don't, I don't know, and I haven't seen it, but <laughs> I like saving things. Um, I have a folder that I just save fan art from different things that I like, and I have a specific folder that's just for Dream Daddy stuff, so all of that goes in there. Let's see, Russian meme, Russian meme. This XML file does not appear to have any style information associated with it. <laughs> I just got a bunch of lines of text. Um, let me see if I can fix it. There we go. Oh, sweet lord. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, Be isn't it like Beavis and Butthead? or something. Oh, that's really scary. Um, I don't know what this is either. Sorry, that page doesn't exist. I will make it exist. I will make this page exist. Oh, what is this? This is so cute. Oh, hold that boy. Hold him. That's so cute. He's all comfy. He's all comfy cozy. That's nice. I like that. That's cute. Let's see. This is my account if it's accessible. Let's see. All right. Oh yeah. So I found it on on Twitter. But here it is again. It's still so good. It's still so good. It doesn't get old. It's always cute. Um. What was the line about the mirror being too small for pe for two people? Oh, it was the, um, he said honey, didn't he? Yeah, I believe it was like, oh, it was honey, this mirror isn't big enough for the two of us, or something like that. Yeah, I think that was it. I believe I could be misquoting myself, but that might have been what it was. Somebody posted all of them on 
Tumblr, so I'm I'm sure you can find those on there. Oh, the one where he's tying his hair back. I saved that one. I have that one saved. That's saved in my folder. Um, what do you let's see? Um, because it's good. Damn, oh, damn, this is a great cornholio. <laughs> Damien Holio. Uh, what do you think of the headcanon of uh, Damien being autistic? Honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, d different people have different interpretations of who he is as a person. Uh, I don't know about autism enough to be able to speculate and to kind of apply that. But from what I've I'm I've honestly observed the character and read into stuff that he says and does just as much as other people. Um, so I I don't really have room to say, and it's entirely up to the developers whether he is or not. So, um, from what I've been reading and what I've been seeing, a lot of it is linked and directly related to his idea of. Um, finding comfort with the Victorian like lifestyle and the clothes and all of that stuff so it again it's up to people's interpretation uh, I just personally wouldn't want to I, I don't know I don't like forcing anything on anybody and I don't that's probably not what anybody's doing they just believe wholeheartedly in something and I just let them kind of do it because he's a fictional character and I don't know people can speculate and think things up however they want um, so that's all I really have to say about that so if I knew more um, about if, well, if I learned more about autism maybe and then I replayed all of his lines maybe i might be able to figure out more but that's all i can really say um yes the mirror line is a my chemical romance reference somebody pointed it out i personally don't listen to why well, listen to my chemical romance like once in my life i've been considering going back because of the game and i want to figure out the, the actual references so that's that did you manage to see my cosplay sorry i'm lagging behind it all um i don't know if i have or not uh i might have seen it somewhere i d i didn't click on the link because i didn't see it pop up but if you send it again then I, I will definitely look at it here's another link what is this other link that i've been sent yes I got that one from when you sent it earlier because I had it. I clicked on it and then I just kind of left it up. And he is absolutely stunning, and I love it. And I did not like it yet, but I'm going to not click on the image and click on the like button and like that. There we go. It's been liked. Let's see. Uh, another link. Another link. Another link. Another link. Don't know what this link is gonna do. What you doing there, Link? Uh, there's an advertisement for something. Uh, uh, what are you doing? I don't know if my computer's being laggy or if this link is just being weird. Uh, I will let that settle for a bit. Let's see if that works. Okay, last one. For this one that you sent. Okay, that one's just a whatever that is. I don't know what that is. It's popping up. Um, <laughs> what is this shirt? <laughs> what does it say? It says Drac Dracula. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. <laughs> it's only two dollars. Where is this shirt? I need to buy it. <laughs> I need to buy this shirt and wear it on my person. Uh, sorry if I'm sitting in again. I didn't know if you saw the first time. I saw the first one. I don't know if the second one is a continuation of the first link, but I, I saw the one that you sent. I'm just projecting because I am autistic as well. Really? Oh, then I'm, I really hope that you can find something about Damien's character that kind of 
I don't know, like you can relate to him in some ways. And I hope that's a good thing because a lot of people have been saying that they find bits and pieces about Damien that they relate to. And if it's a comfort to them, then I'm all for it. I'm all for people enjoying characters and loving them for who they are and seeing themselves in a character because I don't know. It just makes it feel like the game is connecting with you in a unique way. And that's always nice. Um, any thoughts about the theory that Mary and Damien are siblings? I've heard a couple of different theories about different relationships between Mary and Damien. Um, the siblings one, I've heard a couple times. Uh, I'm not objecting to it. If people send me content or link me to content, that's maybe like a, a fan fiction of them as siblings or fan art of them as siblings. Good. Please, please do. I... I love seeing all the different kinds of theories and things that people come up with. And I love the, uh, the dynamic between Mary and Damien because it's just so wholesome and pure and it's a good time. And I love it. I was saying it was a reference because there's a bunch of MCR references with Damien's root and I had no idea I was right, but cool. Yeah. I didn't know. I, the only, um, MCR reference that I really kind of knew was the, um, <laughs> the, the dateline, where he says there's a romance between us, a chemical romance. And we kind of had to work that out a little bit to see if the words fell in the right places so that it just wasn't so cheesy that you were like, oh, come on. I mean, it was still cheesy. It was still like laugh out loud. Oh, this is this is a joke. This is a My Chemical Romance joke. Don't do this. But we recorded it in a couple different ways, and I think that was the one that stuck. And this is the cosplay link, I believe. Do, 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 do. It is loading. Whoa! Your contacts, my friend. Those are crazy cool. Nice. And the and the cravat. I don't know if that's like a little buckle on the cravat or some buttons or something, but that is. A good time. I love all of the cosplays. I've been seeing a few of them um, pop up on Tumblr and Instagram. And a few people that I followed on Instagram cosplayed Damien. And I didn't want to just go up and be like, hey guys, guess what? I cosplay. I, I voiced Damien. That's so cool. But I liked it. And I was just kind of like, you guys are cool. From a distance. The Buggo! Wow, I just Mr. miyagi that and just picked that up. Um, I definitely agree and relate to Damien with being non-binary and trying to find myself, and that's all that makes me happy. Plus, I feel the relationship close. Yes. Exactly. Um. Yeah, I love all the different stories that people have come to me with, talking about where they are along their transition. Um. Uh. It's, I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it apart from the fact that it's really cool to see one character bring together so many people. And it's kind of like a little collection of not only bat dad friends and like a collective community, but a bunch of people that are really supportive of other people's transitions and like where they are and what, what they want to achieve as far as kind of getting to that vision of the person that they want to be. And it's, it's the best when people come and just say, hey, I'm, I'm also trans and Damien like, really kind of stuck with me and it's great to see that there's a trans character being kind of shown and as basically as being normal and it's really cool and I love it. Uh, as trans man, I honestly lost my found out Damien was trans because he's one of my favorites. Yes. Um, I, too, lost it, but for many reasons all at one time so uh people have been asking if i am trans too when i say that i voice damien and when i tell people yes they get really super stoked and really excited and it's always good because um honestly trans love best love equality everybody deserves love everybody deserves to be the best them that they can be wherever they are um whether it be surgery, clothing, um, hormones, 
whatever it is. As long as you are happy being you, that's all that really matters. It's it's your life. You can be whoever you want to be, and if people tell you no, then that doesn't that shouldn't necessarily stop you from trying to strive to become that image of yourself that you want to see maybe uh, two years down the road or three years down the road or five years down the road. Even if it's just like a month away and you want to get there and be that version of you. It's like a really good thing to strive for. And I don't know, Damien just brought all of these people together and it's so inspiring. All of you guys. I'm surprised with the subtleness of the fact that Damien was trans. Yeah, it's a rare thing to see and I don't understand people who wanted to get some drama regarding this fact. Okay, um, one of the things that I rem remember uh, a little bit when talking about Damien at first was um, I, the developers didn't want the fact that he was transgender to be like a major plot point. They wanted to just be natural. Like, this is just a person. This is a person that's a father. He's raising a child on his own. And he's looking for somebody that understands his struggle to become... Im I don't want to say important because he is an important person. But to become this image of like Victorian standards because that's something that he likes and he wants somebody that can understand that he is passion so passionate about something that he's devoted his lifestyle to it while at the same time understand that he can still be somebody worth loving even when he's not like showing off his clothes or his house or his extensive knowledge of flowers and so uh, I really like how they just kind of subtly added that in because it doesn't change who he is as a character. It doesn't change his story. It doesn't change his relationship to his son and to the other dads in the neighborhood and to the, um, the MC, but it just makes it just a casual thing to throw into a conversation. And it's like, that shouldn't be the driving focus on who he is. It's just, something about him that the main character just openly accepts, and that's A-plus, spot-on, and I love it. Uh, who's your least favorite dad? Oh, man. Uh, huh. That's a hard question. Because I'm trying to find things about all the different dads that I like. Um, hmm. really don't know if we're talking about well hmm this, this is really difficult because I like all of them in their own respect but I'd say if I personally were to date one of these dads and not enjoy myself I think it would either be Brian or Craig simply because I am not an athletic person and I don't like going outside. So I'm not saying that I hate the characters in general, just my personal preference. I wouldn't actively go on a date with Craig or Brian because I would get outside and after five minutes I'd be like, man, I want Buffalo Wild Wings or I want to just go inside and watch a an entire season of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! or something really ridiculous. Um, and then for Brian, it's kind of the same thing. I would I would be so angry with him all the time, just trying to one-up me. And I'm one of those people that likes feeling like I have something going for me, even when I totally don't. So Brian would probably get on my every last nerve. So... Of all the dads, I think those two are my least favorite as far as actually dating them in reality. But I played their roots, and well, at least their first two dates on both of those, because I just wanted to see what it was. And I really thought all of Brian's dates were really funny, and I liked all the, the banter between the MC. And he's a lot calmer about it than I would be, so those are the two for that question. Yay, more love and support for Damien. I love all that love and support. So pure, so wholesome. Heartwarming and good. 
let's see, anything. Oh man, somebody's posting on Twitter about donuts. <laughs> Somebody was talking about donuts earlier. I don't know who that was. What is that? What is this? Oh, uh, it's from Final Fantasy. Alrighty, so does anybody have any last things? Because I know that the chat is kind of dying down a little bit. And it is... Oh, yay, Finn! Oh, you're almost Finn-fished. 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 <laughs> I'm going to hold that against you for the rest of your life. I hope you know that. Finn-fished. Spook spook. Okay. Well, it is 11.35. If nobody has any final concluding words that they want to say, get out anything, then I guess we are good to wrap up, then, I believe. I <laughs> the name Finfished. Yeah, that's what it is. All right. Well. Spook Spook. I know you hate Spook Spook, Finn. I know you hate it. Yeah, I mean, for the amount of people that came out, it was a really good time. Um, if anyone wants to do any... Moscow, Russia? Man, I would love to go to Russia. And I would also love to go back to the West Coast. I've been there a couple times. I've always wanted to go to the conventions over there. Um, so, so, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Yeah, uh, if anybody ever wants to do this again, I can totally go through and we can run the routes for all the other dads. Um, yeah, I'd love to totally do this again. We can definitely run routes for the other dads, even if it's not Damien, because I totally want to explore every aspect of this game. So, if anybody's free at another time, I might have another one before the end of August, maybe. If not, then uh, I can set stuff up and we can have a stream when I get back to school, which will be really neat to do once I get there. Yes, I want to go to Anime Expo. I'm just seeing these pop up. Uh, I've been to California a few times, mostly to Disneyland because my mom works as a Disney travel agent, so she's very Disney-oriented, and I just got back from Disney and all this crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, but I'd love to do all the other dad routes, and uh, hopefully more people come, and it'd be really cool to just have everybody come together. Um, if you ever need to follow me, talk to me, whatever, uh, I'm on Twitter. My Twitter is on the stream? Yeah, it's in the little the little window at the bottom, J underscore Son LaRock. Or if you want to follow me on Instagram, I also have my Instagram up there, welcome dash to dash chaos. And I just changed it recently, so it's the same as my Twitter. It's also J underscore Son LaRock. So if you ever want to find me, send me cosplay stuff, send me photos of anything you've drawn, anything at all, feel free to do that. I'm also I'm always open, always willing to talk to people, accept things all that chance. So I will be forever online if you ever need to reach me and ask me questions. So thank you guys for um, tuning in, hanging out for three hours. That was like the longest thing I've ever done anyway. But we'll definitely do this again sometime. It'd be really awesome. So thanks guys. Uh, enjoy your evening, your days, your mornings, your afternoons, your meal times, your sleep times, anything. So long, guys. Bye, kiddos. I gotta stop this. Stop streaming. Bye.